Yeah. So first of all, uh, some introductions. Hikaru usually does the, the introductions. You can do it cause... today, Lavi. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this all started when I think in some preparation for the I Am tournament, we decided to play a match, myself and Alexander. It was not a great experience for one of us. Um, but it was, uh, it was fun to play a competitive match, like high level match. And then we had, uh, my friend Alex play, uh, that also was, uh, maybe not such a fantastic experience, but in an attempt to make it more competitive and entertaining, we asked Krikor and he said, yes. And, uh, so I think today we're going to be doing, what is it? 105 minutes of chess, three Oh, one Oh. Uh, I already asked both of you kind of the question, have you played before 50 games? So, okay. uh, what, what and, is the uh, head to head score? If you don't mind me asking, we know uh, each I, other. I didn't check the overall score, but, uh, the last seven yeah. games, uh, w did not really <laughs> go well for me. Let's put it this way. I mean, at some point they started to go badly. So, but it's been a while. We don't play a lot. I mean, we used to play well, a lot no, in February, ago. we played two games. In February. Yeah, but the, the most of those 50 games were like yes, two years ago, yes. I guess. Two, yeah, three yeah. Years ago. yeah, 18, 19, but yeah, uh, yeah. there was the two recent games. I still remember. <laughs> mm. it's, in, it's in her mind, okay. But never never over the board, right? No. no, no, no I've, I've actually not sure we've met, I mean, in real life, no? I mean, we might have seen each other play, probably by the, no, the Olympics, the, but... Yeah, probably Olympics. Played the same tournament eventually, but yeah, probably mm. not, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good yeah, that, I was I was going to say like, have you before the whole online chess thing two years ago? Did you even, like? Did you know of each other? Do all grandmasters know of each other, or do you just kind of it's like Olympiad and that's it? If you play in the Olympiad, maybe I'm just curious because now we all are familiar with with one another more or less, especially people who stream. But well, we know about the players, of course. I mean, but um, we didn't have any any contact before. Of course, mm -hmm. Alexander was a world champion, so. I mean, everybody. I was going her, to say sure. you. You probably, yeah. Alexandra. Did you? But you're yeah. just from quite far away geographically. Yes. Also, I mean, it's quite uh, uh, hard to find um, like same Our tournaments that we play. It's mostly the Olympiads. What else can it be? Like World Rapid and Blitz, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never um, played it. Yeah. So. Ah, you've never played it. Um, no, no, me neither. We have. It's so a main checklist. Problems. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not in my checklist. Uh, that's gonna be it's, it's okay. gonna be rough. No, I'm waiting. We skipped. We skipped. We skipped the 2020 uh, edition. <clears throat> it's such a pity. It it does seem like a pretty amazing event. Uh, so many strong players. Um, it's suffering basically, but yeah, it should be fun. It's oh, very nice to play that. I considered it as a Christmas gift every year. I don't mm. know. I liked it. I, I know that it's very like difficult times in terms of the Christmas. You're supposed to be with your family and you need to travel and your own suitcases just till the very last minute of the new year. But still, I love Rapid and Blitz so much that for me, it's, um, I mean, I am looking forward to the 2021 edition so much. I don't know when it's going to happen and if. It's gonna happen, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah, maybe maybe December, maybe December again. But I mean, maybe who, who maybe along with the uh, World Championship match. Yeah, maybe, maybe in Dubai also. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. place, I think. Oh, yeah, we Dubai. can all all meet there. Yeah. I would go. I'll go to Dubai. Let's go. Yeah. Let's all go yeah. there. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, I think we're ready to go. You guys can send a challenge. Start whenever. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, we'll see you after the Blitz uh -huh. game Here time. We go. um, we've been messing around with different options. Okay, this is this is the Chess Queen special. Uh -huh. I'm curious what she's going to bring to the table. She oh, the, the Alpin. She's playing the Alpin. Okay, so Krikor is playing G6. Um, pretty standard so far. Knight D2. Mm -hmm. what is, is, what's the move? Yeah, bishop c4. Yeah, bishop right? c4. Although I, I don't think knight pd2 is supposed to be the right move somehow. Maybe, maybe this is some kind of weird theory. I, I vaguely recall the knight going to c3 when I when, or knight a3, not knight pd2 when I when I played this. But um, I guess what white wants to do is white wants to keep the bishop on the diagonal and take the whole center. Where black can't play e5. Um, ooh, isn't this a free pawn levy? Can't you trade it all down and go knight e5 and hit the, hit both pawns? Yeah, that's actually just very. Whoa, 
Take take ninety five. Yeah. 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 You just, just you you just trade in ninety five, and I th I thought you were just winning a pawn. Anyway, Queen E two is played. Okay. You know what I like to do sometimes during my matches? I like to go back and see how fast you spotted a tactic that took me like 30 seconds to convince myself was like good. So sometimes you're just like, wait, this is bad. There's mm -hmm. just this. And then sometimes like you actually have to think about it. Um, when you spot that you could win a pawn like that, like you just said, what happens in your mind? What do you see? Do you just, I, is the board well, I mean, like I mean the, fir the first thing is I would say is that you see a compromise structure. Like once you trade on C6, there's a weak pawn on C6. Um, but then to me, like in this position, there are no tactics. Like uh, it's just like there are no tactics. Literally, I see takes, takes ninety five, and um, and th then it's like, well, both pawns are hanging. There's no way black can guard them both. Like if, if there if there are more pieces, but but because all the pieces are so undeveloped for both sides, everything's kind of on the back rank. You have such a limited um, so so few pieces have moved. It's just one of those things where um, where where basically I, I would have just played it instantly. Because it's, it's just there, no one's no one's really developed their pieces there. You have like the bishop and the knight. That's it. For me, sometimes when I spot, like a, it's like a transformation of a position. Like my brain mm -hmm. will flash, and then it's like wait, and then the difference is that sometimes I miss a response by the opponent, but like I'll see that transformation and. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I will I, I definitely would say though I think in positions without queens on the board like it's just it's the texture I, I know I keep saying this and a lot of people are like what are you talking about but it's just the fact that no pieces have been developed there it's like all the pieces are on the back rank you really only have a bishop and a knight for both sides having been developed there so so that's why um that's that that's why I think in this case it sh you should just spot and play it instantly but like for example say a position like this already there are a lot of pieces developed it's already a situation where. It's much more com complex, much more complicated than the previous one. It feels like... Did she see Queen F4 and like she just thought... Because that knight is so strong. Queen F4? Queen F4 where? No, no, I'm saying... Uh, sorry, uh, knight F4, knight F4, knight F4. Um, mm -hmm. It just seems like Black is like really getting everything he wants. He's getting the nice lock yeah, on the so, center. So like when you, when you go back to the beginning of the game... The whole point behind this opening setup for white with knight d2 to f3 is that it stops e5. That's the whole point. Like, black has a four on three on the on the king side. So if black can never get the pawn to like e5, black is gonna be doing very well just traditionally. So um and Krikor gets it, and and yeah, this is this is not a good position for Alexander. And also now his pawn chain, you see he had two pawn islands. Now he's a he has a connect five. Five pawn five pawns are connected. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking is like queen d7, queen h3, and bishop h6. You know what h6. I'm looking at. D4. Pawn takes, and oh. I think knight h. Well, but I mean, again, this one I see, but it's complicated. This is not. This is not. He played d4, but, knight h3. But your instinct is right. It's the instinct, right? It's right, but the, but see, like this one, I would not play instantly because it's not like there, there are a lot of pieces developed. There, there's a lot going on in the position. It's not. It's not quite the same thing. Wow, but this is. Uh, he missed a win. Knight g5 was apparently bigly wrong. Well, it, it went back. Uh, oh, he, was supposed, oh, to, he was supposed to go rookie two. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, but that, that's already very yeah. computerish. You assume there's something here on the diagonal, though. It's hard to believe there isn't. Although queen b7, knight f3, bishop b. Okay, takes. I guess queen b7 or c6. Okay, checks. Actually, c6 must be right because you you keep ideas with, with queen c2 alive. Man, I'm looking at rook f2. I mean, queen c2. Like, I, how is there? Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's very dangerous. Okay, he goes rook e8, which I also like. Um, c1, good move. Maybe queen h3 is coming here. I mean, it's it's basically a position where black either is going to win. The, uh, queen h3, knight oh, f3. Queen h3. Oh, she missed, uh -oh. she missed knight f3. Uh oh. She missed knight takes f3. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that was a big miss. Alexandra smiles in the face of uh, of mates sometimes. She's just like, <laughs> she'll just like smile it off and and, and keep rolling. Um, okay, she yeah, she plays this b6 line. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, he's delaying d4. Is he gonna go d3? Okay, he's like really delaying d4. Okay, there it is. And now it's just traditional. Wow. Also, I was gonna say, like, I, I'm pretty sure Krikor is like usually 2,800 blitz. Yeah, like, both of them. He is. Both of them. But so. I mean, that that being said, of course, Levy, you were also 2,800 blitz, and um, the match against Alexandra, despite 
having that rating was not no, it was not bad. in my defense it was three plus one if it's three <laughs> oh it might be a different story because i have the element of flagging which is a very big element in my repertoire mm -hmm. uh oh, i mean time is important it's like yeah well i mean of course <laughs> increment is different than no increment obviously i mean like that, that, that goes without saying i really like three two over the board blitz i just mm -hmm. I don't know, three two over the board like that classical format. It's, uh, yeah, it's I, I think three format. two is generally the uh, g generally the most most exciting. These positions, I've had so many of these Queens Indian games with white, and I I like them a lot, but they're a bit mysterious to me. Like the right way to to, to go. Like, aren't you supposed to go like? Well, now can't you take and just go knight d two? Um, wow, yeah, I mean, I, I think normally knight a6 is a little bit dubious. Okay. I, I think you're supposed to go knight d7 if I remember this line correctly. Um, it's been a long time since I've looked at this, uh, but I think you're supposed to go knight d7. But, but white is doing very well here. And, and also, this is the other problem. Even this one, you end up with these hanging pawns. So this whole, um, this whole line with, uh, this, this, uh, Queen's Gam this, not Queen's Gam sorry, Queen's Indian with the hanging pawns on d5 and c5 is always very tricky to play now now you end up with an isolated pawn on d on d5 with white being able to play knight d4 knight f5 yeah this is what i was saying like mm -hmm. i never understood why people allowed this i i just but then if they're better than you they'll outplay you anyway the problem is that in this case yeah i mean uh, it's a tough position to have here i i would not be happy also because if knight d4 knight d4 happens for example white can always just trade because it's a closed diagonal to pawn mm -hmm. e4 so you don't even really have those threats either I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but I remember a few years ago, there was a new in chess article, and I think it was a niche. And he mm -hmm. was basically saying that in all of these positions, they're bad for black because the bishop on b7 is destabilized, whereas the, the bishop on g2 always has some stability to it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't exactly know what, I just remember reading this and I was, and he was arguing that all these positions are always going to be better for white. Like, um, I mean, I, I, I think basically in human practice, that's that's going to be true most of the time. I mean, computers, of course, will just laugh at us and be like, no big deal. Just, you know, it's just completely equal. But computers obviously don't have emotions. They don't really, I mean, they don't look at the pawns and be like, oh, no, I have this weakness on B6. Oh, no, I have a bad bishop. They literally are, are objective and find the best move. So computers, I think, would prove that, that some of these positions are completely fine for black. But, at a, uh, you know, on a human level, I, I, I do agree with Anish for the most part. But computers will just like they'll, they'll take almost any position that we think is bad and right. somehow they'll just prove that it's completely fine because computers Am I crazy? don't worry about a weak pawn what? they just find the best move they, they wasn't there a pawn move. hanging on b4 just now um i don't but probably but i'm i'm guessing crickor didn't want to or not crickor sorry alexander didn't want to go into that end game uh. um with the swap of the and just with a weak pawn on d5 but yeah, I, I think Anish is right. It's just that computers will find some of these positions and they'll literally say it's 0, 0, 0.00. Uh, whereas to us, we just, you, you worry. It's like, you know there's an isolated pawn. Like, you know that, that in an endgame it's bad. The computer doesn't doesn't worry about a, a silly endgame. It just finds the best move in the position. So um, it, that, does, that does play a big role. Okay, take stakes. It's a tough position to play. It just seems like yeah. white can play forever. Queen d1, queen... Right, so, so again, that's the thing, though. But for us, like, when, when you, you're, like, tough position because you can play for, like, forever, computer's like, oh, play forever. I mean, what does that mean? It just finds the best move. Like, it doesn't worry about some game where you're suffering for 50 moves. You just find the best move. What's so difficult? Like, I mean, that, that also psychologically plays a huge role because I, I totally agree with you that it's that it's much better for white and now now i think it's actually quite bad because there's a knight coming to h4 and f5 but the computer will be like okay but i just you know it just it finds the best move it doesn't worry about like oh you know i'm gonna suffer for 50 moves like it that, that's just not the thought process um so it, it actually like in all wow. seriousness it is a thing yeah rook d one's a great move by the way wow he just spotted that instantly and he's just gonna win the pawn okay she's trying to grade play he could just go back to mm -hmm. c1 <laughs> yeah but this is good by um by alexander trying to go c4 but but quite the start for um quite the start for uh for crick or uh b6 b6 yeah b6 is there b7 whoa <laughs> huh what's the idea huh pot <laughs> Oh, did she, oh did, she, did she? I don't think she saw that actually. I think she thought she could take the knight. I mean, mind you, White could have queen and won the game anyway. But I think she actually just like she just she just blurred there for a second. 
Well, it's crazy. yeah, it, it it is a is a very tricky position. I mean, the, 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 in her, it was already defense, lost. She, it was already lost yeah. by that point. To be fair, yes. it was already it was very lost. It was. Uh, she was winning in that first game. She mm -hmm. had a very nice position from the opening. So if she just are they going to play the exact same thing? Mm -hmm. Does he realize that he? Oh my god! Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, that was yeah. You just take take you go to ninety five and you're up a pawn. I mean, maybe uh, the more I think about, it, maybe if Krikor did it again, I almost wonder if there isn't some kind of weird weird proper theory, but. Queens are off, so it's very hard to believe. Okay. I mean, hey, that, like... That being said, I like her position here. Because again, yes. Black can't go E5, and she's going to get the rooks at D1 and E1. And there's going to be a lot of pressure here with the with the, with the the bishops on C4 and F4 and the rooks in the center of the board. Oh, man, that, that's... Um... Oh, thanks but to Matt you... Prowl for the 1,000 bits. Thank you so much, Matt Prowl. Long time no see. It's, uh, saying, it, it is true. Sometimes in your mat, in like these matches, you go back to the line even if it's not great. Like I think that happened a couple of times yesterday. Um, there was some well, I mean, you you made a big mistake yesterday, which is that like you you started memeing, you started playing the c4 queen a4. When even if Roberto during the break started looking at the openings uh, during those short breaks and trying to come up with an improvement, you still should have stuck to what you were playing. So like even, oh, if, even, was... even if people look and try to make improvements on the fly um you know yes. I, I think i think generally if you get good positions and it's not just like outright horrible you you have to stick to those things yeah i should have done uh, several things different for sure uh i will say the most frustrating thing about yesterday was i kept telling myself what i had to do and i didn't do it so mm -hmm. but that's uh that's life well you should so. have just kept playing e4 every game because he really even when he was looking he had no answer to um to uh to the um to the advanced car upon I had a few Brazilians actually tell me like that, you know, they were like very nice. They were like, I was cheering for him, but you know, mm -hmm. supporting you as well. And then they said that I think he spoke with Krikor. He was on the, or, or it wasn't Krikor, but it was the chess.com Portuguese channel. And he was like, I think I'm going to start playing the Sicilian mm. <laughs> just because yeah. of this. Uh, no, H4 is a good line. By the way, here's another example of what I said before. It's the same thing. There's an isolated pawn. It's on D6 versus D4. But there's another yep. position where the computer's like, oh, big deal. Like you, you see, like it's set, not, I guess Rook D8 wasn't best. But it's like big deal. Who cares? It's an isolated pawn. The game goes on forever. Whereas for us, it's like, oh no, we're slightly worse. We're gonna suffer because this um, this bad pawn on d6. Yep. But the computer will just like be like finding the best moves, and it just doesn't care at all. So I mean, a lot a lot of the problem I think stems also from psych, just us being human and honestly not being able to just think about things objectively. Like I would hate to have knight c8, bishop d7. Because the whole time you're like, oh, I'm going to lose. It's just going to take a long time. But the computer will sit there like, okay, and? Yeah, right. And it just, yeah, just play the best move and defend the position. What's so bad? So, so yeah, I, th I think like like getting back to that on each point, it's very true that some of these things um, definitely apply. But like even here, like to me, this position looks terrible. I feel like you ask any top grandmaster, they'll be like, oh, this is the dream. White is so much better. Um, and the computer, I guess after King F6, it's bad for some reason. But the computer Rookie will be four. like, okay, who cares? Rookie four, right? Yeah. Rook e4, rook f4 looks... Oh, but knight e7 is a very tricky yeah. move by Krikor. Although I guess white takes rook e2. Mm -hmm. Bishop c4, I think it's important to stop knight e5 with the jumps again. But yeah, that, that's just, it's, it's true that you ask any top gem, there are a lot of positions that will be like, it will, we'll all say the same, they'll be like, okay, it looks really bad, but I'm pretty sure the computer will just say it's completely fine for, for the other side. I was thinking like knight b5 and try to play a4 but yeah now this pawn is going to become a serious liability it's, it's also tricky because of the structure on the king side because like when you move the knight there's always a knight f5 so like you mm -hmm. can't trade the bishop for the um the white square knight for the black square bishop because then the knight goes to f5 and you have a big weakness on h4 he's so creative at defending like c5 was a threat now he plays bishop e6 and he stops it mm -hmm. very good move by the way now She's trying to... Yeah, knight f5. Ooh, knight c8 doesn't look right. That feels too passive because if you go to f5, the knight can never be removed. It just holds d6 and targets the pawns. I think that was a mistake by Krikor going going back. But now knight f5. Okay, g3, right? Only move. Mm -hmm. G4? G4? Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it's... um, It's still not easy to win, though, honestly, because black is so stable here. He's also speeding up, but 20 seconds is a lot. 
Although now it's 15. But, but, so. but, but the problem, I think, for the problem here for Alexandra is that he has obvious moves. He just he just keeps sitting. He's already he's decided I'm just going to sit and try to defend. So he doesn't really have to come up with ideas. He just has to find, OK, H5. So I have to ping H4. Mm -hmm. Tough G position. GH5, GH5. Actually, now it's starting to look bad. Bishop C2. Yeah, because now you get Bishop C2 and you take F5. And now the Black Knight is really bad. Like Bishop F. OK. Wow, rook b3, okay. Maybe bishop a4? e4? Mm. Okay, a4. Gotta go a4. Knight b5, knight b5, and cb... <clears throat> what? That's a she's... blunder? Ah, rook a4! Ah, ah, ah! Oh, man. Now she's gonna have to rely on the flag, rook c7, no, but king d8. Wow. Okay, now she can make a draw, but... Oh, no. Oh, no, knight e6? Yeah, this will be a draw now. Are we 96. sure? I think maybe she'll play for the flag. Nah, I mean, time is even. Nah, it's going to be a draw. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> well, oh, is, no, is Kirk going to bird time? Is Kirk going to bird time here? <laughs> uh, Rook Z3. Yeah, yeah I was, I was going to say, it was, it was like one of those things, that, is Kirk going to try to, he's already going to try to play where he burns off an extra minute of the clock. Uh. I, I will say, Levy, I've been really lucky because I've never been in that situation, like in the speed chess championships, where someone has like been ahead and they've been able to burn off a lot of time with the clock. But like that must be extremely frustrating. Like yesterday, I forget which game. There was one of those. It games was, uh, that, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Took like five um, minutes or something. Yeah, when I went down, when I lost the second bullet game, and I went down three. Mm -hmm. uh i was just like okay i mean it's probably impossible but like i just have to win one and then that was the game that went to 125 moves as the game was right. going on i was just kind of like all right like whatever i mean yeah you know, I, I just but, mean uh, i just I, I don't know i've been, I've been lucky because i haven't been in that situation but i would think it has to be extremely frustrating to to deal with it's you just kind of sit there you know can't do anything mm -hmm. about it i'm sitting there like wow this is the worst situation possible uh, but, like, I would have done it too if I was him. Yeah, yeah, so. no, I mean, I, I think everyone do it. That's, <laughs> so. what, that's why I said, like, I'm lucky because I've been on the other end a few times, but I've never been on the side where I've been behind and having to do, where I've been behind and someone's gotten that kind of position. Yeah. But I just, I, I would assume it has to be extremely frustrating. Just, like, I, extremely frustrating. I think I had it against, I forgot who, but I don't remember. Maybe last event or something? Mm. But... Yeah, we'll run it back. Yeah. With uh Roberto. What, what what this was rookie one, right? Oh, this classic was rookie one. Yeah. Yeah, rookie one. Yeah, I, I've loved this system for a long time. It's, it's it's really fun to play with white because it's just it's so stable in the center that it's generally on black to prove that it's playable. No, if I could get a Queen's Indian every time I play D four or C four, I would Nobody plays that anymore at like um, Yeah, it's pretty rare. I mean, I, I remember last time that I had it was against the Turizaga, I think, and I'll, or not I'll, Matt, sorry, in Gibraltar. And, I think 20, 2019 maybe. So I, I haven't had it in a long time okay. either, but um, I yeah. I used that game to prepare, I remember. I remember that game. Mm. And then, didn't you have to play him in Pro Chess League also? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I played him in the weird Pro Chess League, the Pro Chess League All Stars event. Actually, it wasn't the regular one. It was the Pro Chess League All Stars. Uh, I think. Okay, so apparently White went wrong, and now she's gonna get Knight E6. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is the Queen trapped? Is that the problem on F4? I think the problem is your center is not stable here, because because I can undermine your pawns on E3 and D4. But you know, you know, I was also thinking the Queen's Indian. I think it really fell out of favor a couple of years ago when there were all the Alpha Zero Stockfish games, because it seemed like in every single one of those games, um, Alpha Zero just like yep. was spanking Stockfish, and it, yep. it was it was really really ugly. So I, I feel like ever since then it's really fallen out of fashion. Yeah, Alpha Zero won some of its nicest games against Stockfish yeah. in a. Uh... In, in those uh in those queens indians although okay, it was now, playing like... the gambit line it was playing d5 the, the mm -hmm. ancient line um which gary used to play 35 years ago why is this so what exactly is black going to do is black going to play f6 at some point um, i would think f6. f6 it's like 
It's gotta be f6, but you have to do it in the right order. It probably revolves around the knight and on e5 and the pawn d4 in some some sequence. Now f6 wins because oh f6 was winning because knight g6 queen e3 won the game. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What the hell just happened? Oh, wasn't was there queen f7? Well, wasn't f6 just? Oh, oh, actually, there's also oh. You're right. Okay. It was just queen takes f7. Yeah, I think Alexandra actually is a little bit nervous. Um. I don't know. I feel like she's a little bit on edge because there, there are a couple like th this game especially. She really she had this game won. I mean, after rook f two, she just goes f six, knight g six, um, and then takes on e three. She would have won this game. So I think she might be a little bit on edge. But again, it's pretty early, so there's a lot of time yeah. left to go. She's also fast, man. It's a couple of games now. She's up like 25, 30 seconds, like pretty mm -hmm. consistently. So. But it's not the right kind of position. Like the position when you're up 25, 30 seconds, if queens are on the board, it's very complicated. It's easier to play. These are end games. Um, so it's, yeah, now the knight's coming to f5. Oh, eh. wow. Oh, that She's is ugly. She's going to try to plant knight. the knight on a4 or on b3, but the white knight on f5 is actually much better because it's also a bastion, but it guards upon on d4. So white will eventually bring the rooks to the e file here. Yeah, like knight f5, of course. And but now what after you get this? What's next? I, I think you you somehow you need to get the rooks to e file. I'm not sure what the coordination like rook c3, rook e3. Okay, okay he goes knight e3. Not bad either, but you can't really break the structure. Black is holding every all the glue is held together here. So I'm not so sure. Oh, he's gonna get rookie one in now though. Maybe no. Yeah, it's now... uh, it's very tense. Thirty seconds each. Okay, now rookie three. But now Bishop I think. B3? Mmm, to hit the knight. Okay, but now, nice. I mean, now white has to rotate, gets the knight in. But there's knight no threat. Before, and, yeah, but knight before is the threat to remove the knight. Knight before, and now rookie seven is coming in. And. Oh, maybe it's just a draw. Whoa, that's a move. Maybe you could have <laughs> gone rook c2 and just taken, and the king can just sit on the two squares, g8 and f7. Very complicated. Yeah, this is insane. Rook c2, rook, okay. Rook, rook g7. Oh. What's this? Rook G, rook E7? Rook E8 and Knight C7. Ah, oh, Knight C7. Because now you have Knight D5. Um, no, 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 Knight D5. No, no, no. Oh, man. Krikor is, is clutching it out. He is... Bishop D5! What is that? Yeah. Oh! Whoa! He's clutching it out, right? Did you say that? He's clutching it out. <laughs> oh, but now, but now he's going to flag. He's going to flag her. Oh man! Oh it's no! It's one of those games. Like it was, it was a deserved win from the start, and then like you, oh, that was way too dramatic. That was. Oh no! Hey, but that's the good thing, you know. Like we have all these speeches championship matches, mm -hmm. but it's good to see some dirty flagging too. This yeah, is yeah like of the, course. It's like the underground leagues over here. Oh, okay, so this is the old. This is a really old line in the Alapin. Supposed to be good for white channel. I had this against Dingler Ryan recently. Queen f three, interesting. Okay, so this is going to be another another end game. Actually, Krikor's gone into a lot of end games, hasn't he? And then like both the black games were end games. This is an end game very early. This feels like the world championship match or something between Kasparov and Kramnik. Like just endless end games every time. And black is slightly for preference because of the... The outpost on d5, but then I think the open b5 really plays a role here. <clears throat> also, that bishop on e3 is mm -hmm. just not... It's not great, right? Okay, yeah. b8. Yeah, I'm actually, like, I'm, I'm confused because Krikor is more of a... Um, he's more of a... He can, of course, he can play, like tactical and positional but i feel like i think of him more as a tactical guy and he's playing queenless middle games and i thought that it was the other the other guy who did that um uh roberto i, I actually mm. feel like for roberto he's much more positional he play, tries to play positional at all costs and so it's kind yeah. of weird seeing crick or playing this way when i would have expected out of roberto more so yeah i think in my experience playing crick uh mm -hmm. it's usually it's usually significantly more tactical uh than positional yeah um yeah he's got a but hey he's well versed have uh have you heard of him 
before all this online stuff like Hardcore? in uh, yeah oh yeah uh, yeah like, of course he, he, but, but like that that's what i was gonna say um when um when, when, when before when they were talking is that i know of him but i know of him because he was he was at a tournament in brazil actually i played this um uh it was called the grand slam of chess it was half of the tournament was held in sao paulo brazil the other half was held in um bilbao spain and because i was there i remember seeing him without seeing that event so i knew of him from there originally but like if, if i hadn't played that tournament in brazil i i mean like i don't think i would know of him necessarily like olympiads of course but I don't think I've actually seen him at any other tournament. Um, did he have the beard? Oh, uh, yes, a, he is, did. Mm -hmm. Wow, so he's had a beard forever. That's amazing. Um, um, yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. do you guys know the, uh, the, the, the 25 and 2600 ELO players of other countries, or do you mainly just know the 2700s? <laughs> I mean, I would say probably mostly I have a pretty good idea, but but South America probably is the one the one region where I don't because there are not a lot of... Oy, 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 there are not a lot of top-level tournaments. Um, look at F4 and B3, by the way. The backward pawn on B2. Um, but tournament tournaments in South America, because there aren't a lot of, like, super high-level ones... I don't. And it's like even Soupy, for example, another Brazilian player. Uh, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. like, of course, I'm familiar with him now and, and, and everything. But like, I don't think I've ever seen him at a tournament. Like, it's, uh, it's just very weird because he, he is like he is like 2550 or something. But I literally don't yeah. think I've ever seen him at a tournament even. It just doesn't ring a bell. And, yeah. um, and so it's one of those things where it's like I think South America in particular I'm not not aware of a lot because a lot of the tournaments that I play in are in Europe. So like if you ask me about some random 2550 GM in Europe, there's probably a, not random, sorry, but if there's like if there's a 2550 GM in Europe, I mean random name and and something, probably I'll be like you know like yes I, I vaguely recall seeing them somewhere or whatever, but I but like in in, in South America I, if if I haven't seen them like somewhere that I, I probably don't know of them unfortunately. Did you ever play those Pan Americans? Of course I did. In like, yep. oh yeah, yeah. And, and as someone points out, they say it's because it's too expensive for people here in Brazil to travel for a tournament. We don't have support sponsorship. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I will say, I mean, and this is me just, just like, okay, taking credit or what, whatever people will say I'm pa going. But out of, out of all the things that have happened with, um, with like the whole online boom, probably seeing Crickor get a sponsorship is a, is probably the single the single most thing that I'm happiest about because. Um, I, I feel like the, the this sort of opportunity for for someone like Crickor, who's a very strong player, like twenty five fifty GM, um, but doesn't have opportunities to, to play play that much to get a sponsorship to have success through this, um, probably is the thing that I'm I'm happiest about overall. Or I'm proudest proudest about sponsorship it. or org signing. Yeah, sorry, org signing. Sorry, that's what mm. I meant. Yeah, with Furry, uh, Fur, Fur, Furry, I think F U R I. Yeah, yeah, Furry and Furry are very different things. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Okay, Levy. Thank you for that. No, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for that, Levy. Thank you for that. <laughs> hey, man, the chat is a chat. It's not me. I don't even. Um. Yes. Oh, man. Anyway, as 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 I was saying. By the way, somehow this went completely mm -hmm. wrong for Crickor while we were talking. This went yep. horribly wrong. Mm, is he gonna? Tr okay. Uh, just take things. Yeah. Just, oh, take take take. G five. Boom. Boom. G five. Yeah, G6, C3. You probably have mate. Probably have and you mate, bring right? the knight back. The knight comes back. Yeah, knight oh. F4. Is a, you go to D3, though, so you have the, you have the check. Because if you go to E2, there are tricks with knight D4. Yeah, knight D3 is important. Because now you keep the checks. So there's no knight C5 because it's also check. <clears throat> and now mm -hmm. the pawn can't be stopped. I thought you could you you were winning the pawn race there and then maybe you could like okay that's uh, I, I mean there's probably the are many ways to win but it's it's a nice one for alexandra <laughs> by the way she looks relieved <laughs> to finally get a, get a victory because that was actually a game she definitely should have lost so i think that kind of offsets one of the previous ones because she yes. definitely should have lost that one but she definitely should have also won a previous one or two oh she didn't play g5 she had the the, the opportunity to play g5 but this line obviously is very good for black mm -hmm. I I actually never understood why people played this with white. I mean, maybe I'm nuts, but this just always seems so pleasant for black. This big center, like I, I mean, I think it depends on your opponent's style and what they play. If if your opponent takes a center, like I'll give you a good example. One player, who, probably the player that that um that I think I most don't like giving the center to is Wesley. Mm -hmm. Um, out of out of all the top players, I know like Magnus made a comment about Fabiano, but like 
I would say that Wesley is the player who, who like, there's certain players where I just, you, you just don't want to give them the center. And Wesley is one of those, one of those guys specifically, um, where if you just give him the center and he gets like, he gets pawns in the center, you don't have to play in the center. Um, it's very hard to play against, but there are a lot of players also who stylistically, they, they don't necessarily play really sharp and take the center either. So against players who, who aren't super aggressive and they don't like to put pawns on E5 and D5 consistently, sometimes it's, it's good to play like this against them because they can get a little bit flustered. By the way, speaking of uh, center, if you go back to move six when Krikor played B5, mm -hmm. E4, Knight D4, Knight E5, and Knight D3, it's like completely winning. Ooh, really nasty. Yeah, yeah, E4 is... Uh... No, I mean, like I said, there's always these tactics. Like, I I don't know. Mm -hmm. Th this well, is the uh, one... Let, let me give you an example. Someone who I played a lot of Blitz against um, is Hans Neiman. And against someone like Hans, because Hans likes to play these positions with black and white where he fianchettos the bishop, it's a great choice because Hans isn't as comfortable because he doesn't like to take the center as much. Mm -hmm. So it's very relative to the style when you play like this. I don't know. Like... When people play knight f3 against me and mm -hmm. I play d5, I, I I hope they play c4 because I'm just like, please, like, mm -hmm. give me this position. But they usually go e3, c4, g3, bishop, right, g2. So. Right, yeah. No, this is super. She's almost up a minute. Yeah, yeah. Krikor is a little bit too slow here, but this is a very bad position. It's very hard to play. But yeah, what I was also going to say, though, once again, though, uh, is that, yeah, South America is the one spot where there are a lot of GMs who... If I didn't play again, I mean, when I think about my career, I played a lot of tournaments in South America when I was young, like 13, 14, 15, 16. But other than that one tournament in Brazil that I played the Grand Slam Grand Slam final, I don't think I've played... I can't think of another time I've played in South America probably in the last, like, 15 years. So so if I haven't seen them in a tournament in South America, and of course, considering it's very cost prohibitive, um, I, I, I might not know who they are. Whereas I'm much more likely to know, like, 2550 you know german g uh right. did alexander blunder yes, yes. Um, we're much more likely to know you know 2550 german german gm um then i am to know like 20 20 2450 you know like the 2450 from one of these south american countries unfortunately oh yeah you you want to call yourself a grandmaster name every grandmaster in the world then <laughs> oh yeah right yeah how many are there like now active um Active, I don't know, probably like 1700. <laughs> that was a very specific guess for someone who said, I don't know. I, I don't thought know it was like two, now. I thought it was like 2000. Oh, right, but actually, and like, I'll give you another example. So there's another Brazilian GM, Alexander Fear, also, also, yeah. also, also yeah. very strong. But like, he actually, I think, I don't think he even lives in Brazil anymore. I think he lives in Europe. Um, not sure where exactly, but I think he lives in Europe. So like, someone like him, I've seen him at a lot of tournaments because he's playing all these events in Europe. Um, but if if you if they if they haven't played if they haven't had the opportunity to travel and play then it's uh yeah it's mm -hmm. it's, it's it's difficult. Oh, he lives in Georgia. Okay. But he he'll in in Georgia. Wow, that's a very yeah. of all the Atlanta, European countries. Georgia. Oh 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 that yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, Lovey. <laughs> I meant Georgia um, the country, obviously. Um, uh, hey, Atlanta's you know a good place except for COVID rate, right? but it's um. I'm still always blown away by the fact that Atlanta has the busiest airport in the United States. That always oh, Hartsfield is great. I love Atlanta. It's like it's one of my it's one of my many homes. Also, great show. Mm -hmm. Rook G two is such an ugly situation for the rook, but it doesn't matter because yeah, I mean it's just, well, it's more the knight on e four with the pawns around it. This knight is just outpost to e four, but. Yeah, Krik Krikor is doing really well. Rook f1 or a5. a5, a6 looks nice to create a create a weakness around the Black King. This reminds me of my games in these lines. I'm like doing, I love the opening, I love the position. And mm -hmm. then sometimes it just takes one tactic, it opens up everything. He's got connect five. He's got the legendary connect five. Right, and he's also got that pawn on a6, which is amazing. Yeah, I think Krikor is just gonna win here. You can even sack because the knight on e4 is so dominant. Yeah. Yeah, this knight on e4. Well, but she's getting queen c1. Trying to, at least. It's incredible. Everything is defended. Yeah, very, wow. very tough. But, but yeah, anyway, as, as I was saying, though, it's... Uh, a, a lot of South Americans, if, if they don't have the opportunity to travel outside outside of the, the region, then um, 
that unfortunately like you know that's probably why they're that's probably why they don't have ratings that are as high either because if they can't travel most of the strongest competitions are in europe um so it's a it's a tough situation well, i'll give you an even more extreme uh example i w oh ouch Ooh, ouch yeah nice tactic. um <clears throat> i went to barbados for a tournament like a small mm -hmm. invitational they do a tournament every year for their most talented players who are like 21 2200 they were not 21 2200 man like their prep was good it was all good they just don't have any fide tournaments there mm -hmm. so exactly yep they camp on the on the skill and then when they actually get a chance to play like they're they're very very good so but yeah. it's yeah i can't imagine like training and not having a chance to play here you know kids here will play like uh they'll play like 50 games in a month mm -hmm. like 50 fide games mm -hmm. in a month like that's yeah. nuts yeah no i mean i think um i, I mean I, th I think in general um it's yeah so it's, it's the opportunities so it's 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 difficult but um but yeah i i feel like like when i was younger i i i think i i played so many tournaments in south america it's amazing i played like in brazil uh, actually i didn't play in brazil when i was younger but like i played in argentina i played a tournament in bolivia um i played some uh, i played like a couple a couple other tournaments as well i forgot i forgot where exactly but I, I played like four or five tournaments and um and uh and and so like i knew a lot of the people who would go on to become gms from the from the region like i played against them i knew them through these events but now like if you ask me about like the most talented juniors like soupy i know about of course because uh because of online chess but um like if not for that i would literally would not know who he is simply because he hasn't had the opportunities uh you were which which gm were you talking about were you saying soupy again soupy yeah or? yeah yeah i'm saying cause I, he's pretty young right he's like 21 or 22 i think no 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 no. he's my age he's like 24 um okay. 20 24 25 okay. i know him because uh ostrovsky played in colombia a couple of years ago and he played mm -hmm. soupy soupy won the under 20 section oh, okay okay so we right we but again we... it was a tournament like yeah in, in yeah. colombia exactly yeah yeah we uh yeah yeah, I've known about Soupy for a while, so like it's funny. Like I even when I was solving puzzles on Chess Tempo, mm -hmm. he was always at the top. His account is like LP Soupy, mm -hmm. and we always well, would see him. That's so then he beat now, Magnus. Isn't <laughs> what? Isn't that his account now too? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So on Chess Tempo, we always saw LP Soupy, and now, yeah. yeah. Um, no, guys, I'm I'm 25, but uh... oh, speaking of speaking of South America, uh, Alan uh, P Picho is that how you say his last mm -hmm. name? He's yes. in a he's in the next tournament. Is he? He qualified. Yeah, he's oh, yeah, a, yeah, he's yeah, a... yeah. He qualified, right? He wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that um, Platy? Is that Platy three? Yes, that is. Yeah. Okay, because I know there's a, there's a few guys. Right, and I know I know of him um, because he's played quite a bit in Europe as well. He's he's played Gibraltar several times. Um, played something else as well that I've been at, but he's played quite a bit. He's played quite a bit. So um, Queen yeah. B four. She's been thinking for a while. Just subscribe. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I love this position. You know what else I don't love? I don't love that she went away from the Alapin. Like during the break, I feel like she should look and just see that what Kirkor played it was not good. And then then after the break, she should go right back into it and and just um, go right back there and, and, and do it again. Well, she's she's doing what she's doing what I did. Mm -hmm. Get good positions in the opening and then stop playing it uh she man it's crazy like how many alipins she plays like i i want to become one of these players that just has a pet line which worst case equal mm -hmm. position that you just have to play and uh i don't yeah. know i just f5 totally. maybe i guess a3 here to stop a4 i don't know if i love a4 i assume she's going bishop a2 okay take take bishop d7 a4 Okay. I mean, it's still fine. I mean, actually, it's not fine because e4 is too weak. If you only had the double pawns, it wouldn't be that bad. But I think the pawn on e4 is a big weakness. Isn't um, f6 just winning? Yeah. Because e6 is guarded? Yeah, yeah, this is really bad. Wow. Knight e4 is going to guard everything. And just because people are asking, uh, of course, you should never forget the, the greatest player from Brazil of all time, which was uh, Mekking. You know who Mekking was, right, Levy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, he, he was like... I don't know if he was top 10 in the world, but he was very, very good. And then he mm -hmm. basically, I don't know what he got, but he got something, some kind of really, really bad disease. And he, he basically had to quit chess. I think he was supposed to, I think he was actually supposed to just like die from it. Um, but then, but then 
he was he was able oh he's top three okay he was top three okay but he, he got some like terrible disease something where he was basically i think he was supposed to die and then he then he and then, then he overcame it but i mean he it was like the boat you know the ship had sailed by then it reminds me of a comment that i saw yesterday i i named my my video summarizing my match with Roberto. i named it almost and somebody for uh, well, the top comment was man almost is such a depressing word and somebody went no it's not look you almost died See, it's not, it doesn't always have to be negative, right? You survived. I was like, Jesus, man, come on. <laughs> uh, people got, uh, people got yeah. interesting minds. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I have vague belief in, uh, in the counterattack here from White. Oh, uh, yeah. No. I had belief until Bishop B5. That was the big mistake. No, Bishop B5. Very tough, very tough. Krikor is really on its game today, it feels like. I, I feel like Alexandra, she's she's a little bit tentative, is, is what I feel like. Um, Damn. But but she changes it up here. I like that she's changing it up, and she's playing the... Uh, she's playing the, um, the Francuska is a she, the... Yeah. Oh, I mean, sorry. I, I looked over, and I saw the structure, and I was, like, French, and then I realized mm -hmm. the Epon hadn't moved. Um, okay, this is... Uh... So this B4? is the, this line that uh, Wesley played against Magnus in the, the tour event pretty dangerous i think it's supposed to be very good for white well yeah magnus played c5 but wesley put his queen on g4 but if you don't put your queen on g4 like this line is not it, it's it, not yeah, so it, i mean it, a computer i think for a computer it's very computer is very happy but for a human without obvious attacking ideas um f6 is very interesting isn't it i mean you're yeah, just inviting some... white to attack your king kind of with the bishops this is uh I think this is all in my notes, also F6. So this is some sort of, and then like C4? Yeah. No, it's I don't remember. Notes, okay. Yeah, but I don't remember everything. Yeah, I think something with a knight to E5, but it, it is dangerous. You need to know your stuff. Mm -hmm. C5 here for, for, for white. How about Ben Bishop C7? Yeah, white's position looks very scary for black. <laughs> yeah. He's going for a think. Yes, he is. Yeah, he plays like C5. It. Yeah, probably Bishop yeah. C7 here. I, I don't know if I like C5 that much, though, because Black's going to get a center. Bishop C7, uh, Knight F4. I think you have to go Knight F4, E5, and hope it works. Yeah, I think you, I think, think what she's doing is absolutely right. Just E5 and hope that it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you kind of have to just go for it. Yeah, plus now you can get a queen to like g6 or g4, maybe. And yeah, bishop g4 is a, a serious. Um... Or yeah, bishop g4. This is what I mean. Like this is not. It's not so. It's mm -hmm. not so simple. I would go um, d4, d4 all the way, and then yeah. bishop g4. Look at this diagonal of pawns against this bishop. Totally yeah, locking bishop it. Bishop g4. Knight on f4 is, is is great here. Just bishop g4. <sighs> I wouldn't have done it's, it's still it's still okay as yeah. white can't take I mean I'm guessing she didn't play Bishop G4 because she was worried about some sack on D4 and she wants to keep the bishop pair. Uh-huh. Um what does he play here? But it's still, yeah, it's still very hard to play with the knight on F4. Computer wants rook e4. But yeah, that's not... very, very human move. Rook e4. The most <laughs> the most human move I've ever thought of. Man, rookie um, four is such a you just sack, you 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 double black's f pawn, then you take d4 and you say I'm not I'm not doing mm -hmm. badly. I like bishop g4 here. Okay, queen e4, probably queen c8, I guess. You have to make sure yeah, queen c8 with bishop f5. Bishop f queen c8 threatens bishop f5 trapping the queen. I'm sure she'll find it. Queen c8. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bishop f5 is just a dirty little trick to trap the queen. You might have to sack on d4 at some point. Like now. Mm -hmm. Like you might just have to take the like bishop d4, e d4, knight b d4 or something and But Bishop hope D4, that... can I Okay, so he sacks a knight, yeah, so you take. So what, rook d4, bishop f5. I mean this should be this should be winning for both, so objectively. Actually, rook d4, can you take f3 and put the bishop on e5? Like that also True, true. That that's also um Yeah, no, that's a move, yeah. I don't know why you would. I'm just saying you can, and I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty. Pieces. I'm pretty sure Black is winning here. It's just a question of what the specific uh, plan is. 
Okay, goes, she goes there. Very logical. Queen e3, knight g6, I assume. Mm, to back it up. And then, and then, yeah, and then bishop c7, rook e8. Black needs to get like two moves in. Yeah, but knight g6, h4, no? Hmm, true. Bishop I mean, c7, I, h5, h5. Might as well. Might as well. h5. Yeah, or knight e5 right away. Knight e5 or bishop c7, knight e5. Some combination. Suddenly, I'm starting to believe in white's position. I don't know, G3. Oh, you don't even have to play G3. You could have just played H5. Queen G7. Queen seven. Oh. I think Queen G7 is almost an only move here because you, you have to protect F6, but now the Rook has so King H8. Holy crap. Rook, rook F6? F6? Rook six? F6, six, Rook E8, Knight F8. I think That's... you just have to, yeah, you just have to go and hope that it's not losing. You take, you block. Because now you have the Fossil with Bishop H2 also lurking oh that's disgusting bishop h2 rook e8 wow yeah. yeah i think he missed that he missed it i think but he can he play g3 or is there still bishop, still g3? bishop g3 i would assume yeah and crick has got no time yeah he's just gonna lose uh bishop h2 <laughs> he walks into it bishop h2 and take the rook she'll see it there's no way there is no way that she'll miss this yeah, she's got the time so i think she'll oh my god she's actually she doesn't like her pos. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She her facial expression was like. Rook F seven. Oh. F7. <gasps> oh no! There's. Wait, there's Bishop F six. Take with a rook. Holy crap, dude! That was way too close. King G seven. Yeah, I mean she'll she'll win now. Knight G six. Oh my god, <laughs> she's got too many pieces. <laughs> yeah, you've got two rooks and two juicers. Holy cow. Knight f5. All right. Don't hang mate. No mate, please. All right. There's a knight. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Enough drama. <laughs> yeah. So the, the win was bishop f6, right, Levy? Uh, let, yeah. It was, king, it was king h8, just bishop takes f6. Because when you take on f6, you just get mated on g8. That I'm was so go. unbelievable. Wow. I'm gonna pull it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was just it was knight six king eight bishop f six queen f six queen g eight. Crazy stuff. <gasps> oh, yeah. and there's made. Yeah. Wow. He re oh apparently he realized. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think he mentally prepared a move. He was down on time. Mm -hmm. So right. he's like, I'm going to just play a move. And then... Yeah. Jesus. Oh. Damn. It's crazy. Okay, so now Crickwar is playing, what, the Hippopotamus? <laughs> I guess so. It's so probably... For better or for worse. Yeah, I mean, it's a playable opening. It's not that bad. It's the uh, it's the engine crusher. Does it still crush engines, or do engines just destroy it now? No, engines just destroy it now because they don't, they don't lock up they don't lock up the position. The whole point is that basically there are two pushes, d5 and e5, in, in all the hippos, and you you do the opposite. So when they go d5, you go e5. If they go e5, you go d5. But now the computers are basically doing kind of what Alexander's doing in this game, where they just literally just improve their position. They don't they don't they don't get aggressive and push in the center. So now it just doesn't even work most of the time. Actually, it's funny because uh, speaking of the players, I think I tried this. Uh, there was the the bot battle um, mm -hmm. where we played all the bots, and I'm pretty sure I played Crickor bot, and I tried to do it, and the Crickor bot literally refused to close the position, and I just got smoked in the center eventually. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, this is a uh... B5. This wow. should be very okay. good for white, although, again, now that the king side is closed and black's in the castle, what does white do here? B4, A5. I don't know. I'm not liking this from a human perspective. I know the computer still thinks white is doing well. But again, the black king is very comfortably safe here on the uh, on the king side. So she goes for it, which I, 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 like the, I like the spirit of it. But it is begging for black to attack down both the A and B files here. Yeah, rook FB8. Although C7 is hanging. Yeah, so you kick okay. the knight and then you put the rook over. Knight b6. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like rook b8. I don't know. This looks very scary to me. Somehow, like rook b8 and then like t5 is a good move too. Actually, a great move because now the bishop on b3 has no scope. The pawns just build a wall and they kill the diagonal for the bishop. 
and now rook b8 rook a3 knight b6 uh, i mean the white king is so vulnerable here you really want the king to be on g1 not b1 this looks really scary uh, now with white after d5 you probably never play e5 right because as well well need... because then black is a c5 c4 storm yeah. so you mm -hmm. can't really close it up either yeah this yeah. i mean i'm the computer i can tell things that white is still fine actually says zeros obviously um but but from a human standpoint this is so scary your king is under such fire here on the queen side well it's zeros but white is up a pawn right so that means that black has black, black is has... very well yeah yeah, that's exactly what it moves. means, yeah. Okay, apparently not with bishop f8, but... Mm -hmm. No, this is like... Bishop a6, knight b6, knight c... Holy... That okay. seems premature. <laughs> yeah, that seems, that seems like a very premature attack. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, that's that stupid Gibraltar thing, sorry. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, but... Um, yeah, I think white's okay here. F4, now you can't take because of, of D5, and you get the attack on, on the diagonal here. Knight F5. C5. <sighs> what was that? F5. Wait, what? F5 was good? No, I don't know. Just No, I mean, Knight C5 well. is the obvious human move. It has to be the obvious human move. You try to close, di close the uh, ah, attack, mate. and then you black can never take either. Now F5. Yeah, wow. Uh, one, just for it's the, it's the better move, see? Mm -hmm. I would have played F5 first because I just like to push pawns, but Knight C5... Take, take, there is this checkmate idea. Right. No, but why did he sacrifice? I don't... He yeah, that I don't know. Very, very, very peculiar. I will say that. Very, very peculiar. Is it like you're running hot? Is it like, I'm up three, it's been going my way, let me just get a little aggressive and... Probably. CD5 apparently is a bad move. I don't really know why, but apparently it is. But you know what I'm realizing? It's, it's, the fact that the computer was saying this is like 0.6 for white when white's up material is very mm -hmm. scary. Because white's just up in exchange here, but now there's probably too many weaknesses to the black king. Like queen d3, maybe rook f6. Rook f6. Yep. I, I feel like rook out, queen d3 and rook f6 looks very strong. Just use the open file, use your towers. Use the two towers. I don't know wow. about that one. Wow. I really don't know about that one. Uh, c4? Uh, it's getting wild. <laughs> I mean, I guess both players are low on time now that I look at it, so it makes sense, but... Queen e2 maybe, or rook e1, or rook f1. Rook f1 looks good. Wow. Just allowing dig and b3? Rook f1 it? after? I guess rook f1. Oh, but then rook b2. Oh, yeah, rook b2. Queen back. Queen, back queen e2, right? queen e2. Okay. Queen e2. Who is queen winning two? Is black winning here? I think it's a draw. It's a draw. You trade. You trade. It's h6 c3. H5 c4. Yeah, it's a draw. Very fitting result. Yeah, it's a draw. <laughs> wow, wow, what a game. What a game. Okay, now someone needs to not do anything insane here. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna have time for one more game, I think. Yep. One more. Yeah. No, that was a crazy game because Crickor probably should have won that um after that opening when he had just a huge attack um but yeah it's it goes back and forth wow hey trumpowski what's he gonna play e4 knight d2 okay mm -hmm. yeah crazy if she stuff. plays if she plays c5 i hope he goes e4 bishop h4 c5 e4 uh, that line is a lot of fun Okay, this is also fine. <laughs> All right, so big... here I think the right move is um, C5? C5. Yeah, yeah, this is a very old line. Um... Because I used to play the Trompowski all the time when I was younger. This is, a, this is a very, very old line. And I think c5 is supposed to be good, but it's very hard to play for black. Because you have to worry about like bishop b5, you have to worry about e5, and quick development in the center. Yeah, literally, I think this is called big center variation. That's uh, like if if uh, if you play bishop g5, um, e6, e4. I think it's known as the big center variation. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> yeah. Do you know about the Manhattan Gambit? Love you. I play. I play. I play real openings. Oh, Manhattan Gambit is very real. It's a uh, d4, f5, queen, d3. 
Oh, 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 yeah. Actually, that that is. Uh, why is that called the Manhattan Gambit? Because because D five by black, and then you go G four. So that's called. No, the no, Manhattan no. I mean, Gambit. I, I, know, I actually, when you say Queen D three, I instantly know what you're referring to. But why is it? What's the story behind it being called the Manhattan I don't know. Gambit? I just you know how it works, man. You play some moves, and then chess.com says Manhattan Gambit, and I was like, why is it called the Manhattan Gambit? So yeah, the actually, Gambit. this this Queen D three G four is not a joke. It's a, it's a real line. Um, I feel like I've seen like Mamba Diarov, maybe even Kamsky play it. At times, like I've I've actually seen it, like it's it's legitimately. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Manhattan Gambit's pretty good. Now Brooklyn variation is garbage, but. Uh... Do you literally just go around like playing random moves and openings and seeing what Chess.com calls it? No, but I know it's called that because I it, that uh, Brooklyn variation is e4 knight f6 e5 knight g8. Oh right, of course, yeah, because Joel Benjamin played this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That that one actually, yeah, yeah that that one I, yeah. I knew. Yeah. Yeah, but Joel Benjamin likes the Mets, so. There isn't a baseball team from Brooklyn, though. I know, but he likes the New York Mets. I'm, you know, as a Yankees fan, that's kind of upsetting. Okay. But <laughs> it's because okay. he's from New Jersey or Brooklyn, or you know, liking mm -hmm. the Mets is. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay. It's another end game, by the way. Krikor is gonna. Why has he not taken and played a3 yet? Isn't um, that um because of the vulnerable black king here? The king on f8 is not well played, so he's probably trying to figure out does he really want to trade queens and just play a dry end game or try to capitalize on the king position? I don't know. Just I'm not really one to talk, but this looks very easy for white, right? Just... Yeah, put the bishop on this other diagonal and double stack. The... Yeah, I mean literally, it's very easy. <clears throat> One, two, three, and then bring the king and these pawns. You also have a rook lift to b4 as well. This rook lift is also a problem. So you can all you, you target the pawn. Don't go, you rook, don't go rook b5. Yeah, rook b5, b4, and your rook gets trapped. Yeah, so, <laughs> so rook d4. Rook d4. <coughs> so probably b5 and then rook d1. Okay, bishop d7. I don't know, this isn't so bad. This isn't so bad. It's bad, but it's not lost, at least. Bishop d3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th yeah, this looks okay, though. It doesn't look like the end of the world for... Because uh... if Alexandra can get her king over to where it guards, then she can probably start moving her other piece into the game. It's going to be a buzzer beater, actually. Like, they theoretically could play another Blitz game because there's right. 148 on the clock. I don't so. like B6, by the way. I don't know why, but somehow it felt like the bishop could have guarded everything on C6, like the, the mini wooden shield versus the pawn on B6. Now the bishop goes to C6, you only guard two. You, you, you can't guard this one, too. So, I don't know. This B6 pawn feels very vulnerable to me. You play, like, G3, F4? Yeah, I mean, I think white is winning. I think I think white's rook H8, and there's some, this must be winning. Like G4? Um yeah, G4 just wins. But King G7. Rook. Oh no, it doesn't win. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh, Krikor missed King G7. That's a very no. nice move, because now the pawns are gonna be on dark squares. Whoa. That's very bold by Krikor. It's Why? it's understand I mean he's still fine, because he can go bishop d3. But, but I mean it, it, it but... is gonna get a little bit messy here now. Because there's going to be some d4. There's going to be some d4, rook c2 for counterplay. Yeah, exactly. d4 and rook c2, and now you get. Now it starts to get very tricky. Yeah, rook c2. Did you have played bishop e2 there? Yeah, and then rook d2, I, I think, was the move. I mean, I guess it's, it's still probably a draw. But... Bishop bishop e2? <laughs> now bishop e2. Uh oh. Oh, she resigns, and she's going to get one more game in. One more game in. They'll get one more game. One more game. Yeah, there's time oh, for man. one more game. It's crazy. Yeah, bishop e2. It's wild. Oh, she wins this. It's only three. Right. I mean, I, I'm sure that on the break, she'll probably very quickly look at that Alpin, and then then she'll probably go back to it in the first game, see if Krikor is ready for it or not, and then she'll probably I, I def default back to main, mainline Sillians. <clears throat> yeah, this is... Uh... Was the, Did this start out as a Nidorf? I don't know. Oh, this no, is no, the, uh, the Rouse. What is rookie one, by the way? I've never seen this. This is a Rouser. Aren't you supposed to put your other rook on E1? I don't know, man. I'm, I am far past removed from my understanding of this opening. I, I mean, I thought uh, the whole point was you put the other. I've never seen rookie one. Like, in my entire life, I, I've never seen rookie one. Well, I, I'm trying, what's the I'm, idea? Actually, I'm looking at her facial expression. I think it was just like a slip or, or temporary, like 
brain i, I don't know temporary like her, her laps because her, her face is not is not that of someone who's like yes this is this is like this is preparation mm. like, yeah i mean now i mean it's still fine with bishop d3 but you can't really claim to be better unless you have knight d although she kind of justifies it with knight d5 at least i'm gonna have to go back and look, look at this because i know this this rookie one is not something i've ever looked at with either you color, just... I, I played this with both both colors. I didn't understand why you couldn't just take there, but this is uh... take where. I thought just bishop d5 and maybe try to play like ah oh, no, I was gonna say bishop d5 and like try to play e5, but this is fine. Queen e5 and and it, this is probably about equal. Rook d4, bishop d3, white's up a pawn, but it's a double stack in the center. Maybe rook d4, bishop d3, and then some kind of f6 just to rip open the center of the board and maybe claim an f file. Okay, now white's better. King d2, king e3. Those doubled e pawns. They look bad, aren't... but they can't really be attacked. Although maybe black can go rook a4, a5. Yeah, rook a4, a5 is maybe the way to collect it. Wow, rook a4, rook a5. Actually, which is why I see why the computer like B3 was to stop Rook A4 because because how else can you target the pawn then? Okay, but now <laughs> B3 and King E3 and I think White's just clear, clearly better. If you go B3 and you stop this Rook A4 idea, oh no, now Rook A4, Rook A5. She needed to go B3 to stop the Rook from being okay. Well, now now it's justified. Now now she's clearly better. Mm -hmm. Like Rook D1, I guess, and Bishop E2. Someone in my chat said, "Imagine Krikor mm -hmm. as your uh, 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 an older Krikor as your neighbor who doesn't like it when you get on his lawn." <laughs> that, 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 yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. That's kind of weird, but okay. Krikor is uh well, these guys got like they have so they have such intense beards. I'm uh, they they look scary just because of their their beards mostly. He's like a very nice guy, but he's he's got a very like a very intense beard. I've got like a, I've got like a baby beard. You, you've got like a, you've got like a clean, like you know, you've got like that clean, like regal look. This man, Krikor looks like he streams chess by day and is like a hitman or a bouncer by night. Like this man, he looks, <laughs> he's an intense looking dude. Uh, by the way, Krikor got the other rook lift to c5, so now, now it's just about equal. Oh yeah, he's gonna get the pawn. King f4, rook d2 is disaster. So. But I'm trying to figure out why was b3 supposed to be good um, earlier? Because I, I figured black could still move a bishop and go rook c5. So I, I'm kind of curious. I'll probably look after the game as to why 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 the computer gave white a big advantage. Okay, pretty normal. So probably rook takes the e5. <laughs> Whose structure is better? Or like who's um black structure should be better just because a weak pawn in the center the pawn in e4 is weak white has a 3v2 on the queen side but you can't really use it dude was there g5 there no king e5 and f6 king d4 oh it's not made oh my god i thought it was made for a second uh -huh. i was like could you play g5 it was not made that was i saw the bar tank and i immediately was like is there like some crazy tactic uh, -huh. uh but then now this is looking very bad because the no, actually, it's completely fine. I think because because I think Krikor missed King D4. And now his rook's kind of stuck in the center. Like there there are just no squares available. King so the D6, rook is kind of stuck. C4? So you have to go King King F6. But then after Rook E1, again, yeah, like Rook E1. Oh, wait, no, no, Bar just jumped. <gasps> oi, 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 oi. Because B6 should go A5 and you, you A5. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, oh man. And now, oh. how do you win? Rookie one? Yeah, rookie one is winning here, right? Oh, your bishop is hanging. Oh, bishop c2! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Because I was just going to say the bishop is hanging. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. It's not the end. No, because c5 is still a threat. Oh, rookie four, king c3, well, king c6. Well, but I mean, it's still a game. But yeah, rook d2, c5, c5. Rook d6, wow. I guess. I would almost pre-move rook d6 here, actually. Rook c4. King d3, I mean, it's probably yeah. a draw. Rook d6. Oh, so, 
Maybe someone will be flagged. Yeah. Who's gonna go for it? She's gonna go for Rook the flag. This is a nice trick. Yeah, it's not clean, but she needs the point. King D4. But he's fast too. He is fast. Uh, uh. Plus he's gaining he's gaining time back always. Why? Of the lag comp. It's three three zero, right? Yeah, it's three zero. No, I'm saying like his, because of the lag uh, comp. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. He actually wins wow. on time. All right. It's break time. 8-3. Krikor has a solid crazy, blitz run. Crazy, crazy. All right. I think I'm going to take a short break and I'll, I'll come back. Uh, whenever you guys are ready, we're ready for some bullets. Okay. My challenge. Sure. All right. See you. See you soon. Yeah. 1-0 is crazy. I've never played 1-0 for a set period of time. Like, I'll play a few bullet mm -hmm. games, and I'll... Yeah, okay, so, the, so so I think they're talking to their chat. They haven't started, though, so... Um, no. Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, yeah, again, it's... I mean, I know people are going to pog on me for this, but... Um, oh, they started. Okay, here we go. Um, what, what, what I would say is, I think with with one zero, when, when you're playing, um, you know, when you're playing a match, it's obviously it's it's very tricky. But at the same time, if you're behind, it's a good thing because you can come back. But for me, like I, I since I'm so used to it, um, and and I'm I am generally, uh, generally the favorite against. Uh, um, there was ninety five there, I think, with a mate. But since I'm generally the favorite, I actually I really love playing bullet in in these sorts of situations. Yeah, wow, their 95 was absurd. Bishop d1 and then and then mate. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, like, this is... Do you remember we didn't know what the Alakine Gambit was? This is apparently the Alakine Gambit. What this is This is one of the many Alakine Gambits. I don't know, Bishop d3 on move 5? Giving up the d4 pawn? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, someone did that against me. Daniel Naroditsky, I think it was. Um, he, or Daniel, I should say. He was doing that. It's weird. I say Daniel Naroditsky, and that makes me sound like Charlie or something. Like <laughs> the, the, the prophet Daniel Naroditsky. Uh, that wasn't this, bad. This, can you do more of that? Yeah, I can do a decent Charlie. Not on demand, though. It has to, it has to, it has to flow naturally. You know, like, I have to tell people about something that's throbbing or... Thanks for the fat 10 gift subs, Pikachu. Nice, nice. All, All right. right. Um, Queen C... Okay. I guess Why it... did the bar tank? I don't... Was there something winning for black? Oh, knight h5. Oh, after king b1, knight h5 wins because you have, you have the back ranker. So she tries to go for the back ranker anyway. Um, I mean, if she's fast... The problem yeah, is I think Crick is just faster in bullet. That's the problem. I think Krikor is probably faster. But what is this time compensation thing? Because I, I haven't heard about this. Now I'm a little bit perturbed well, by this. You look at Krikor's time. Like like every time Krikor like like there's moments he'll he'll lose time, but he'll gain like on our screen, he'll gain back like like see it like ticks and then oh it goes back up 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And uh at least on my screen. That's it looks normal it like, looks normal right now. But as you see, like his time will get to like 1.8, and then uh -huh. it'll go back up to 2.1. And having said that, he still won on time. Tough um, game. And it, it, it's it, it's it's not really clear why that happens. Hmm. Um, I don't know. It's actually funny because he has better ping. Like his ping is 108, and hers is 147. Yeah, it, so you know, I, I don't know, but. It, it reminds me of uh, many, many years ago. I think it was like 2004 when I played against uh, the one and only, um, the the one and only Tigran Petrosian um, online. So uh, I was, I remember I played Tigran. I was on the Internet Chess Club at the time, and um, there was some bug or something with time compensation there. So like all these, all these guys who were in like Azerbaijan and Armenia and, and these sorts of countries where they they had like they had, oh, that was a free piece where they had um. Where, where they had like bad ping, they would make moves and they would take like two seconds, but because the compensation would count as point one, like so it'd be like it'd be like doing oh. a free move for like the entire game, and, and they were using like two seconds, and so that's what this reminded yep. me of. Uh, Andrew Tang and uh, Hans Neiman played a hyper bullet game, and I think somebody made a YouTube video out of it that took like five minutes. 
Wait, what? Like because because of their lag compensation that mm -hmm. they like messed with, it took like many minutes more mm -hmm. than. Okay. Also, Alexandra's losing. How did that happen? I feel like she just she blundered some pawns here on the queen side, unfortunately, trying to be too fast. But she's see the problem is she's just a little bit too slow relative to um relative to Krikor. Um, but she might Wait. win this because actually in the end game it's gonna be hard to coordinate your knights and your bishops. Like yeah. you can't really pre move with knights and bishops here. You you don't you don't really have the coordination. Whoa, something's gonna something's queen b six queen b six take the knight queen b six. <laughs> queen, okay. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, because because he, it's there. like you can't coordinate your pieces here. That's the problem. Like in a, in um, an end game where you need pre moves, you can't coordinate. Although queen b two queen, queen yeah queen b two. Okay, but, but now, now she, she must win. Crick or, or now Crick or can pre-move, I should say. But I was going to say, Crick or cannot beat her 5 versus 14, right? I mean, come on, no you way. think not. Wait, there was 92! I know. Just move. Just break the structure, Alexandra. Break. Oh, whoa! What is... Whoa! Whoa! She just what has to take on? something. Just take something. Oh my, oh my, what? Oh, oh, oh she Krikor gets him anyway. Six. <laughs> Krikor missed age six. Jesus. Wait, is she with a mouse or is she playing on touchpad? Like, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm honestly not sure because, yeah, that, that that should not have been as close as it was. What? What just happened? What? Okay, I like how now we go back to playing, uh, we're playing a no boom right now. Mm hmm. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the thing is, all she had to do was that one move was just either take the knight or just start pushing pawns so he couldn't make pre moves. But the mechanics, oh. yeah, the mechanics were lacking a little bit for sure on, on Alexander's end in that game. This is, uh, I like these positions a lot. These are all super I don't fun. like, I like this position more for, or I did like it more for black. Now I think I like it more for white. Um, whoa, 96? 96. Wait, this is not so obvious. Queen e7. I thought bishop f5, but there's probably something. There's rook f5 and bishop c8, I think. Knight c I mean, at, oh, I would have taken e4 here, but okay. F4, oh, yeah, the knight was trapped. Right? Just, or, or wait, no, there's queen g3 now. Queen g3. <laughs> queen g3. I mean, queen g3 was just crushing. Wow. Oh, but that's a problem. Rook d5, c1 queen. Two? Or that. <laughs> oh, no, no, but there's a bishop that covers. Uh, he plays it anyway. But yeah. Okay, Krikor has to. It's mate. Must be mate. Okay, so you tickle, tickle. You tickle, tickle, tickle to g5. And then I maybe you take on c2. Like, what about just king h? It's no, going to be you a draw, to... right? Queen c2. Oh, now you can do the tickle tickle again. You tickle tickle a few more times. Aren't you just. There, how? No, rook d2? Some. No, Krikor's gonna make a draw here. Yeah, he's gonna make the draw because he was using too much time there. He has to make the draw. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, he, okay. he had to make the draw. That, that, was, that was a very exciting game, though. Good for Alexandra because she was completely lost in that game. Oh, yeah, yeah, Krikor's playing with white, so he doesn't need to play it for a win. He doesn't care. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's about play for the win, but the thing is he was starting to get way down on time. He was down, he was down like, five seconds there at the end. Like, yeah, I mean, the clock is a piece, as, as the famous saying goes. You know who said that, right? No. <laughs> who said that? I mean, I know the saying, but actually I have no idea who said it. <laughs> okay. Good one, Lovey. Good one. It's not a saying. Uh, well, I mean, probably it is kind of a saying, but... Um, well, I, I always hear it, so... It's from the extension. Oh, oh, in the... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at me. I don't even remember my own quotes. I wonder if that's how, like, uh, authors feel. Like, someone's like, you wrote that in your book. They're like, I did? I don't... Right, <laughs> exactly. Should go the, bishop g4 and get rid of this bishop, probably. Bishop a7? The, the best example of that is Boris Avruch. He's the author, if anybody mm -hmm. doesn't know, of this massive series on D4 for white. Mm -hmm. And someone on his Facebook was like, you know, what do you mean you don't know this line? It's in your book. Look. And like a picture of the book. And the guy was like, you think I remember all the lines in my own book? <laughs> like, yeah, right. that's what it... Right, of course. 
This should be four. Then like C4 two. Actually, I like D4, though. I really do like D4, because at least it solidifies the center a little bit. Um, Ooh, although, rookie. although there's probably some... Rookie one, King H2. Bishop C2, Bishop C2, Bishop C2. Oh, she hang... Ah. But maybe she has a mate? Maybe some Queen D8. Queen D8, of course. Regards you can't careful. call it. Rook E8? Rook C8? Rook C8? No, Bishop F5. Oh, wait, oh, there's bishop a bishop. Takes. Oh, there's a bishop. Bishop, Bishop, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was also like, oh. she has something. But if you can't go, if you can't go... Ah, Queen. Queen, 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 Queen. Yeah. Move, just oh, move. Queen move, Alexandra, just move. Oh, she blundered mate, though. Ugh. She should have won that game, I think. Yeah. But you know... Wait, now that I think about it, isn't 45 minutes of bullet like nuts? Isn't that like it could be 20 games? Yeah, yeah, no, it's not over. If she if she if she wins a few games in a row, um, it's still very much a game, much a match. Okay. No, 45 three. minutes. What what is it's normally 30, right? It's 30 in the speed chess championship that we do. You guys. I mean, do... I mean, yours yours is, is 25, so that should be in the main one. It's 30, I think. Yeah, 45 yeah, is but... a lot. I mean, I, I would say objectively. Um, but, I don't know. To me, I, if, if it's 45 minutes in bullet, I think I'd be a favorite in every match I ever play. So, um, so I would love for you more get, bullet. You get 20 games of bullet. Oh, if you're ever trailing after blitz, that's... Yeah, you could... Uh... Yeah, I mean, maybe the ol maybe the only person where like I, I think I'd still be a favorite, but it would not like be guaranteed. We would not be some huge running up score. Is Ali Reza? Um, ah, you beat him when it mattered. Yeah. Well, and by, by the way, I mean like I mean like in a match that like um I mean like a speed chess championship match. I don't mean just like a bullet mat bullet only match. Um, because bullet only, of course. Then then there are people like Andrew and Danny and all, all all these other guys who are who are huge beasts too. But bullet is also up and down, right? Like, it's weird because mm -hmm. you need time to get into the flow. Like, it's very important to start hot because if you start cold, you, you need right. to time to catch oh, up. Also, this is one. This is one zero, oh, not one one. This is much different too. Yep. So yeah, one 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 and one zero. Oh, I think people need to realize there's a huge difference between them. Rook G. I'm still waiting for Rook G four, man. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rook G <G4>. four. <laughs> Rook G <Yeah>. four. <laughs> Rook C2. <laughs> what? Oh. Alexandra's speeding up, though. I like her speed here. She's getting quicker and quicker now. This Rook man D7 really never played Rook. Uh, Rook A2. Krigor might lose oh. this game. Oh, good save, though. H5. Uh oh. H. Uh. It's mate. Rook A8. Rook A8. Okay. Uh, Rook F1. Rook F1. Rook F1. Rook F1. Rook F1. Rook, Rook A6. Rook A6. Rook F6. Oh, no. oh, she, oh, she did it. Oh, she gets the win. Oh, man. Oh, my God. No, I mean, that was gotta... tense. That was very tense. <sighs> Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, that's the thing. It can, it can come back here, yeah. Mm -hmm. C6, a well, positional pawn sacrifice in bullet. But this knight on b4 is very strong. Uh, that was just giving back the pawn. What was up the pawn? No, I know, I know. Oh, I'm you meant just... for black. Oh, I thought you meant white c6. Oh, you, oh, you meant the uh, the blacks. Black ant was c5. Okay, yeah. Oh, knight c5 is a nice move by Crick or Rook Queen e8, like... knight a4. Oh. Yeah, and black's pieces are, are really... Look at, look at this white rook and this white bishop. Oh, man, this is gross. Although bishop f4 is a good move. Bishop e5... There should be two, knight b1, knight d3, uh, then rook d1, rook d1. Has to be a little bit careful here. Bishop e3. It's a game, it's a game. d7. Those knights are so strong. Knight c2, bishop d, bishop d2. It's still not over though. You trade and you take a6. Take a5, I mean. Knight e5. Yeah. Knight c6. There's a hanging piece. Oh, but now there's knight c4. Okay. Again, gonna be gonna be a fun finish. 
Yeah, she's up a couple seconds, but to yeah. be honest, he almost flagged her up 10 seconds, so... Yeah, but then I think after that game, she sped up a lot, so... Knight C3, okay, just Bishop B3. Chill, Although I would chill, prefer chill. to be black here, I feel like. Not not just because of the material here, but because I think the move should be should be easier, but I, I don't know. <clears throat> knight D8, yep. Knight C6, good G5. Check. This is nice now for black. I still D5. think this should be a draw. Knight D4? There was knight d8 too, maybe. Flick, flick in h5 at some point. Just flick it in. Flick it. Just flick Go. it. Go. She's got to flick in h5. Up. You just got to flick it in. Now you can't. Yeah, now you can't. Now, like, now, now black's moves become too obvious. Flick it. Just flick it. Flick like, it. Yeah, like flick right it. now. Flick it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Uh, oh! Whoa! Too, too whoa! Whoa! Time. Yeah. Too little yeah. time. So yeah. winning endgame there for a move. Yeah, yeah, for like for like one move it was winning. Yeah. Brutal. Oh man. Yeah, you gotta um, you gotta go H5. At at some moment, yeah, you, you just have to flick it there and play H5. Um but yeah, it happens. 95. Ah mm -hmm. yes. this is this theory, of course. Yeah, I don't I I well, it's bullet, but I was gonna say I don't know why people allow this with black. Just white is very happy. C three, bishop g five. Yeah, bishop probably c ninety seven. Oh, no, it's actually a good move. I think just like you can move the knight. Yeah, ninety four and f six, maybe c four. You probably have to take d four here. Just take d. Um. Okay. Knight f six. Knight d five. Maybe a five b four. This is a, this is actually a pretty balanced match. Yeah, doesn't look bad bad at all. Yeah, I think really for Alexandra, the the reason that she's probably gonna lose this match, barring a huge comeback, is just because in the first couple of games she I, I don't know if she's too nervous or just a little bit on edge. But in those first few games, some critical moments she made some mistakes. But outside of the first few games, it's been really really evenly balanced. So you take okay now c four. Okay. Whoa. Knight b4. <sighs> Knight f4. Oh, there's no queen g3. I mean, it's it's very unclear. I, I don't know what to. Although Alexander's up time, queen d5 and rook b4. Oh, queen e5 also attacks the rook. This should be three. Subscribed. Queen a4. This should be six and rook b2. Queen d4. Queen d4. Oh, oh queen d4. Wrong order. Wrong order. Oh. Well, Wait, there, there was rook f2. She's up time, though. She just has to not panic. Just don't panic and finish the game. Queen a8. There was rook f Yeah. Wow. There was rook f2 to stop don't it. Don't panic. Move. 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 Oh, this Gotta is... Go. I mean, you just... Oh, king g... Oh, no. She allowed the draw. Oh, no. Wow. She the draw. What, a, what a hold, man. Oh, man. What a game. What, what a save by Krikor. What a save. Wow. What Fried liver? Or, okay, Bishop C5. Evans Gambit. Oh, so solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is fun. The center attack. Well, this is less fun with D5. Well, there's just, but... a, yeah, there's just a classic uh, Juco piano. Or Gucci piano, as we call it. Yeah, this is a very, very solid system. Yeah. Um... The fun thing about Bullet is we get to see a lot of different openings. Mm -hmm. I guess knight c4, knight e3. Yeah, rookie one. I would have played rookie one. I mean, it looks pretty balanced here. I, I Black should be better in, in a long game, but in a quick game, bullet, anything goes. Yeah, it's called the Gucci piano, you guys. I don't know who, I forget who first said that, but that's what we call it these days. In fact, isn't there a new movie coming out or something like the House of Gucci? I thought you were going to say a movie called gucci piano and i was like <laughs> don't i don't think so uh, house of gucci i don't i don't know yeah i gotta tell you man i i'm not a I'm, I'm not in the market for a gucci sponsorship but all these luxury brands I always go on their website to see what they got like just just to see like why it's so expensive maybe nice if i don't know i don't get it i just don't get it yeah 
Well, because it's understand. Gucci, man. It's Gucci. Yeah, but it like looks like a like a local elementary school kid like designed it. I mean, <laughs> it just looks like a, a toddler that just learned to scribble, and then you put it on a shirt. And it's like two thousand dollars. Some brands are really nice, and they're silk. You know, you feel good wearing it. It's like silk and. Man, some of those designs, I'm just like, I don't geez. I don't know what Alexander did here, by the way. She kind of messed this up. Yeah, and it's equal time and Krikor's better, so it's bad news. Yeah, I mean not even better, but a, a free flowing simple pre move situation too. Like for example. F four? Uh Dubov oh, wears oh, a bow. Oh, oh, she almost got it. Oh, What'd she got say? the with the what mate, the mate. I was gonna say that uh Dubov gets a lot of like, you know, hype because he's got this Balenciaga sweater. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Time. Oh, she's gonna lose on time. Yeah. Um, but his sweater is literally just a piece of material that says Balenciaga all over it. Like, but it's right. so expensive, you know. So. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I I mean, I'm not really in the market for that either at the moment. But yeah. But yeah. People ever get yeah. the Versace sponsorship? Versace. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I don't know much about it. I mean, I don't know. I I, I just uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to say, but yeah. No, you gotta. In my opinion, you have to spend money on suits and shoes, and and I think that t-shirts are just not. Shoes? You gotta be like Charlie. Yeah, like a nice pair of like you know leather shoes, like Italian dress shoes. Oh, you just mean like one one pair of dress shoes? Yeah, I mean that's pretty normal. Oh. One, yeah, but also like I don't go anywhere. I walk to the laundromat. I don't need Italian, you know, mm -hmm. alligator skin shoes or whatever. Like I. Yeah. Which is totally a thing. Wait, what is so. that? There's some movie that Nick Nick Cage was in where he's just like the snake snake jacket with like I have, what's the movie? Chat can tell me, but I remember seeing that whatever movie it was, and it was really good. Oh, Night of Seven is such a great movie by Crickor here. Um, there's is some the movie one where he's like a no, not Snake Eyes. It's not Snake Eyes. There's some movie no where he was young and he was wearing like this 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 like jacket. It was like a snake jacket. It's not. Is it was not the movie Snake Eyes though. Um. Gone with the treasure? wind. I don't know. Anyway, National. oh, ninety four. Yeah, we look back. There's King a F8. fork. King F eight and Rook C two. It's game on. Yeah, this Wild is, at uh... heart sounds like it could be. That sounds like something that could be right. G six here. You gotta go. Yeah, G six. Yeah, you gotta go G six. G six. Okay, A six. Rook D five. Rook D five. Maybe. H. -6. You have to check. Rook D five. Oh. I mean, yeah, but now it's so tricky. Knight c3. I'm not even sure how you're supposed to win this. Rook a5. Oh, rook, rook, rook a5. Yeah, rook a5 and then b5, b4. B oh, but it's a threefold. Yeah, because she she thought she had time to make another move. She didn't realize. Wild at heart, I think, is right, by the way, for those of you who are wondering in chat. I think that was the movie I'm thinking of. Now we got to... Whatever this is, I, what is even the name of this system for white? Like, what is some sort of reverse? um? The famous Hearthstone streamer Peter Savidler, he likes to play this from time to time. I've seen him play it quite a bit. Um, he occasionally plays chess as well, but he's he's done this uh, done this a few times. I don't know what you call it though. Didn't he win? He won a title Tuesday recently. Oh, did he? I don't know. I, I think I, so. I yeah, Maybe like two, yeah. two, three weeks ago, I think he got mm -hmm. nine points. So. Yeah. Uh. Well, I've I've really liked the positions that Alexandra has had. They're always like she's always looking for a fight. Krikor's just been a little Yeah, it's wild at heart, by the way. That's that's the move I'm thinking of. Mm. That's exactly the jacket I'm thinking of. Um so yeah. Alright. Um When are you getting your snakeskin jacket? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Oh, the Rook F two and Queenie Two is winning, by the way. But now the game goes on. Um <laughs> Yeah, Queen C. Oh, uh, Bishop's hanging. Bishop's hanging. Ninety four. I'm sorry. Am I? Am I? No, am no, I no, higher? You're, or was you're, there? You're not insane. It was. <laughs> well, well, trick or sack. He does. Because okay. now there's Bishop C. Uh, what? Uh, I guess it still works. Oh. Rook F two. Oh, Rook F two wins. Yeah. 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 But there's H four, H five, maybe. It's uh -oh. losing, but it's not so bad. It's. It could be worse. Just subscribe. Although I guess King C6 and B5 is pretty standard here. You said it, yep. Oh, you got an H pawn and a dream. Yeah. 
And well, you can dream... take. You could have traded and gone H5, maybe. I, I don't know. King B4, Bishop B3. But the problem is again, I, I feel like the time situation is just too much to overcome here for Alexandra. Bishop B3. Move the king somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. H6. Oh, you're right. 96 H6. Wow. King three. H6. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, now, but... now you lose by the tempo. Uh, king of. Yeah, well, I mean, this is seven. losing, but it's not. I mean, I actually wonder in a real game is how losing this is. Oh my god, it's not losing at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, at the end, it's definitely not losing. Yeah. Oh, uh, but not the other time. Yeah, I think the time is a little bit, little bit too difficult um, to overcome. I, I, I mean, I think I think Crick Horse just more, more experienced. Also, I think I feel like Crick Horse probably played more online, which makes sense. Crick Horse plays e6. This is not correct. Um, but the game goes on. Yeah, but it's it's fun, and I think fun goes a long way. Also, being up eight games probably means yeah, you can I play mean, some I, wild chess. Yeah, I mean, I feel like chess. this match has been very close. I think the real difference is in the first couple of games, um, basically, Alexandra, for whatever reason, uh, she wasn't able to find the right moves at critical moments. That's really a difference, because otherwise, it's been pretty balanced. The Crickler got out to that fast lead, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, ever since then, it feels like it's been a lot of back and forth. Mm. Yeah, I, actually, now that I'm looking at, I think I feel like I want to get that jacket. That's that's a really nice jacket. If that's <laughs> if that's for sale somewhere, maybe. Oh, but now Alexandra's gonna win this game. She's up a lot of pawns here. Ninety-four. So if she moves fast. She's just gonna win this game, like. You just got to move fast here. Just put it away. And I think that's one of the hardest things is when you're a stronger player, especially you're so used to trying to play precise moves and be very clean and technically sound that, um, you know, in, in bullet is very weird because then there's some situations where like, you just have to be like, okay, I don't care what I do. I just have to get the dub. I don't care. My moves are going to be bad, whatever, but just make, make moves instinctually versus trying to play the absolute best moves. Oh, 95. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't like what she's done here, but Again, she should she should be winning uh, bishop b2. Don't like that either, but okay. Rook, Rook a2. Oh! There's no way to stop mate. There's no way to stop mate in one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no way to stop mate in one. She has 18 minutes, so that could be like six more games. But she, Oh, man. Or sorry, that could be like eight more games. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so... it, objectively, it's possible. I mean, I, I don't really... Okay, now Krikor decides his name is not Krikor anymore. His name is Min, 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 Min Lei. Um, by playing this bishop knight f6 on move two, and, and instead of playing a traditional, um, is that? I mean, it's the I, I know this variation, but isn't it just better for white? Like, it's it's playable. It's complicated. <laughs> min min min. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> isn't there like knight e4? Or yeah, this is. I think knight d5 and knight e4 were both moves. Um, anyway, yeah. Okay, f5 is Knight a threat. Knight c3, of course. Oh, f5. Oh. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That's just fatigue. Yeah. That I, could I, actually definitely. be the, the game. I mean, that could be that could be the match. I mean, right? I well, there's also f4 with a second fork, too, if you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think she's disgusted by that game, so she just resigns. So that was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think 45 minutes is definitely difficult, especially if you're behind. I mean, or like behind by a significant margin. Um, but yeah. Oh, he played knight f6 to pre-move for the Alp, and that also makes sense. This is another opening that I think is pretty dangerous in in, in bullet to play with black. Like against, if you play the Karl Khan and play f3, I would never go into the fantasy variation because it's too easy for white to play. White has insta moves, obvious stuff going on. Apparently, this is bad. Although now it's losing, king h8. Maybe just go for the knight g4 d3. Go for the big cheese on the on the king side. Um, yeah, where's I look back and there's like, there's no rook. Where, where are all the kingside pieces for, for black? Oh, oh my god! Oh, did she not? I think she just forgot that it was me. No, I think she expected bishop f6, maybe. Oh, she so she's expecting bishop takes and he played the yes. other one, right? Right, no, that, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, and he got that. He got that nice twenty eight hundred. I I actually believe in in what Grishuk said. Mm -hmm. He said uh, in his very you know powerful. Oh no, voice. this is exactly the this is the Portuguese right? But he played it from a different order, and so she fell into this. The, or is this Portuguese or not? No, this is the Icelandic gambit, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, it's not yes, the Portuguese. Yes. It's the it's the Icelandic gambit. Yeah, but it's still it's still vicious. Anyway, I was just gonna say Grishuk. It was like I think you should be able to just surrender the match i don't think you have to run the clock out yeah no i mean i th i think i kind of agree with that i think they should probably incorporate that into uh into future but i feel like if they're going to incorporate that into like the speed chess championship or, or any of the events they do which are mm -hmm. with this format of time there probably should be a limit at which you can't you you can't like you, you shouldn't be allowed to say like abandon the match with like 10 minutes left for example like mm -hmm. if you want to do it with like more than 10 minutes i think you should be able to but i think if it gets under 10 minutes you shouldn't be allowed to be like you know you play a critical game like with six minutes left and you're down by two and you lose that game and then you're like okay enough i'm just gonna ban it i don't think you should be allowed to do that i think it should be like oh no but if it's like a if there's like a mercy rule yeah i just feel like inside 10 minutes you shouldn't be allowed to but like over 10 minutes you should at some point be allowed to do that oh there's some repetition going on or not no no i mean white's good here white's good can you uh <laughs> knight f7 what a cheeky move by Kirkor to try and chase knight h5 okay not king e2 oh rook, yeah, rook c7 is a huge threat yep she should take and go rook f1 yeah yep rook f5 yep yeah yep yep, yep. Mm -hmm. although she's down on time again gonna be hard h5 or... I would do B5. yeah i mean everything wins but it's so hard to play now you know what's amazing this is the sort of position that i would lose to andrew tang every time even if i had like five seconds more because the pawns just wait uh uh and now he's gonna one, sack one guy gotta wait what it look when the match is not going your way this is what happens like mm -hmm. you just yeah it happens it makes sense. Yeah. You throw in a couple of games and uh okay, it should be five. And this, this is just this is good for white, ninety three, like knight c six okay. Yeah, and especially when Andrew is playing on uh no time taken away for pre moves. Oh yeah, yeah, website. well, yeah, but I, I don't play chess on the on. I don't play chess when the rules are are bugged. But when they when they when the time space continuum doesn't abide by or, or by actual actual physics, yes, exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, takes in bishop c five is not so clear. Okay, anyway, queen e eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I, I mean, I, I honestly would say that, um, like on to me, like that, that's just so wrong. <laughs> that just violates the basic rules of chess to me. Queen of seven. <laughs> what about what about of life? <laughs> yeah, but I like, just mean I, I, I mean I, anything else, like you can say something, but the fact that you can make a move and no time comes off the clock, like that just it, it violates everything. Uh, this is <laughs> Rook F. What? I mean, can black's better here. You, you you can trade. Black black is slightly better because of the structure, but I think it should be a draw. I don't like c5 though. She should have tried to go for a king walk on, on one side of the board. H4 or queen g5. Take and check. Wow. Queen d2. Queen d2. Sir, what? Oh, g6 was a forced checkmate. That's insane. That's crazy. G6 just wins the game because of a checkmate on H5. That's just nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely insane. That's just disgusting. Oh, no, Queenie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I realized sometimes, like, when I, when, I, when I threw away some games, like, in matches, I was like, sometimes it's better to laugh it off and then... Yeah, well, I mean, of course, this is this is this is all, all all in good fun, but but yeah, I think I think certainly it's true. Um, you know what else? And this is why I think matches should be allowed to be surrendered, especially like if you're headed towards a bullet portion, because like in a, in a situation like this, when you're way ahead, you can tell like 
you can tell by the time usage and the general way that Crookware is now playing all sorts of different openings that when you get way ahead the confidence just builds and builds and so yeah. if you're way behind like in this match i mean it's just it's just for fun but like in, a, in an actual match in an event um dc5 is winning but an actual event for for like for where something's on the line if someone is going to rack up the score because the one one side they're like they're kind of down they're a little bit disappointed in their performance but the other side they're just like they're just ramping up into more and more um they're, they're just getting more and more confidence it should be three yeah oh, no. yeah yeah oh but should be two yeah and then like the tactics all don't work out in your favor basically oh you know actually someone made a point though unfortunately which is like you, in a way you can't have someone abandon the match because the prize money is determined by the actual split of how that what the result is ah, or whatever i mean you think these people care about like <laughs> i mean yeah, could, i mean, it, I mean yeah, well yeah the i am not a gm championship every game costs like five dollars because we're not worthy but in the speeches championship every game could be like a hundred bucks so yeah i mean you know you win a couple of games you get a couple <laughs> hundred bucks um you know how much money I made for being uh, eliminated in the finals? Three hundred dollars. Like, wait, what? Yeah, three hundred dollars. <laughs> like, like this event was like it was not for money. I mean, I think Roberto ultimately made like maybe seven hundred bucks. Or like he for winning for winning a full event. Okay, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to sound weird or, or diminish the event or the accomplishments, but like, why were you guys so nervous then? I don't. Well. I think it's just the it's just the, the the event itself. Like I got nervous playing okay. Alexandra, you know. Like I got nervous playing her. Okay. There was no prize money. So okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, but actually, no. As someone pointed out, it's true. Like it, it's right that in Brazil, seven hundred dollars is a lot of money. That that actually is no joke. Correct. Um, so Correct. no, I. But I, I assume he was nervous because of the actual match, like the prestige Correct. of winning an event, more so. Correct. It's uh, you know. But I'm, yeah. Uh, but yeah. uh, okay, I mean, if we're mm -hmm. on a serious note and not trolling, you get chess.com cannot commit a hundred thousand dollars to IMs. Like, let's be serious. You know, you got to get the best people in the world paid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it, no, it's, and uh, yeah. ultimately, it, it was more of an event for the fans. I mean, hey, right. John Bartholomew big timed us. All right, he was like, I can't play. It's not worth my time. Oh, so, he said that. Well, he's, he didn't play. I mean, he won the last one. He didn't play in this one, so. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. So, you know, uh, Pog Champs was a big exception because there was a title sponsor. You know, we didn't have the Rolex I Am Not a GM Speech Chess Championship, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but yeah, it no, would no, be that's cool. True. That's true, yeah. Title sponsors make all the difference. Knight C3? I mean, White's winning regardless, but Knight C3? But yeah, no, I mean it, it's it's actually true though. I mean that's it's a good point. Like one one dollar is um yeah, not one dollar, sorry. Seven hundred dollars, yeah, in, in Brazil probably goes a long way. Like I actually I wonder like what is the what is the breakdown um like for tournaments in Brazil? What what are the first prizes in like US dollars? Like if I don't know, like if Crickor plays a tournament or Soupy plays a tournament, what are what are what are the um what what are the prizes? Uh, I'm gonna go look. Well, I assume there, there, there are a lot of Brazilians in, in my chat, but, um, but yeah, like, I mean, if there's a tournament that, let's just say there's a tournament, like, they all get together, like, Supi, uh, Supi, Krikor, I don't know, like, Gilberto Milos, Rafael Letal, all these guys get together and play, what would the first prize be like? If they just play, like, I don't know, some, like, some, like, Blitz tournament, a weekend event. Uh, probably not very, not very much. So, like, 2,000 for the whole event, probably? Two thousand for like the whole event. Okay. Wow. Wow. Hey, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, Roberto, who I played yesterday, is mm -hmm. the is the current champion of Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I I didn't know that actually, but but yeah, that's... he beat he beat Krikor in twenty nineteen. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, so they didn't have an online one in twenty twenty. No. Oh, cause yeah. so so they 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 were smart. They didn't randomly change the format and hold an event just because they had to hold a national championship. Good to know. Correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, it gives me some confidence. You know, he, yeah. uh, like I said, he's got 10 years on me. I'm hoping that in, you know, uh -huh. uh, in 10 years, I'm wiser. I'm older. I'm, you mm -hmm. know, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that's crazy. He's straight up the champion of the country. I mean, he's, I actually, when I saw you guys playing, I said this during my commentary, I felt like his style is really, really good for classical chess. Um, 
Yeah. Like for, for Blitz and Blitz and Bullet, I, I it's still very good. He's still very strong, but I really felt like the way that he plays, it's he's very suited for um for uh for for, for classical. Yep, I got that impression with Tanya Sokdev as well when uh, I was who? preparing for her. Tanya, Tanya Sokdev. Sokdev. I, I I don't I am I supposed to pronounce C H? I, I always said Tanya yeah. Sokdev. It's Sokdev, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me, I mean, Sorry, socked. I mean, literally, no one, no one in my entire life has has pronounced her name that way. Literally, I've no never, one. I've never seen a ch pronounced such. I, I didn't know I was supposed to say <laughs> such stuff. I thought the whole point is you're supposed to not pronounce the letters. Okay, I love you. Oh my gosh. All right, well, I'll call her Tanya Sajdev. Okay. Okay. For we'll now, just say, yeah. we'll, we'll just say okay. Saj. And anyway, when I was preparing against Tanya, I was like. Jesus, she plays the same way all the time, just like just like mm -hmm. Roberto. And I'm like, yeah, for classical, it's really good because you just mm -hmm. yeah. show up and you play, and you don't need to do much work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so okay, so yeah, I'm actually I, I'm 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 happy to see Alexandra still, even though she's behind and and obviously she can't come back in the match. She still is winning games, um, and she she is keeping it together. It's not just like every game going the wrong direction. No, they're still interesting games. Oh, and of course it's Sach Dev, Levy. How do you not know about the, the one and only Sach and Tendulkar? I mean, come on, man. Like, seriously. That's why you have to know it's Sach Dev. Yeah, know... but that's his first name. So? It's S A C H. Is she, and, I mean, I mean, you know who Sach and Tendulkar is, of course. And he's, like, yeah, one of the greatest, but... greatest players in the world. I mean. But, uh, no, I just... Do you actually know who he is? I, I, yes. Okay, just making sure. Yes. Okay. This is not, uh, but like I said, I thought it was a first name. So I, I ooh, Queen's not trapped. Never mind. Double no, but Rookie Eight's coming in with the uh, takes. Queen. Double, double, double. Rookie Eight. Uh oh. Yeah, uh oh is right. Although somehow, no, what was it? wrong order? Wrong order. Wrong order. You had to take first and then go Knight F six. Uh... Queen B four. Keep fighting. Knight E five. Knight F four. Knight E five. Knight F four. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Knight f4, keep fighting. Queen b2. I feel like keep there's fighting. a. Oh no! Oh, no. Botas Gambit. Oh no! Oh, she was expecting King f1. She didn't see King d1, so she was gonna take with a check first. Yeah. 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 So g3, Bishop g2. Yeah. Oh, this line is also fun. Mm-hmm. But I, I would say Alexandra also, she is someone who I think um, with her training when she was growing up, I think a lot of it was, again, over the board because she, I, I think her prime was probably like mid 90s, not prime, but her childhood was like early to mid 90s. And of course, you did not grow up playing a lot of Blitz on the internet. So um, the fact she's, that she's keeping even with Krikor, who I think has had a lot more experience and has played, I think, like if I had to guess, at least a few thousand more games online um it, it makes it, it's impressive that she's keeping it as close as she is yeah how much time is left queen g3 three minutes yeah, i think we'll get one more game in yeah maybe two. Oh, that's right it's one oh it's not one one you're right yeah Oh yeah, definitely we'll get one more, and you're right because it's it's one zero, so it's a fixed fixed time set. Yeah, we should we, we should do one Double. of these with me with with me and Roberto. We should run it back. It'd be fun. <laughs> or me and Rosen. I haven't played with Rosen in a long time, and he uh, you know that was he, like, he. What are you talking about? That was like not even a month ago, man. What are you talking about? No, Rook we D6 haven't played. Was, oh, one. Levy Rook D six was a beautiful tactic. Pawn takes Queen C five, and Black couldn't recapture. On, on move 31. Oh, that was a beautiful... Yeah. I mean, she's going to win anyway, but that was a Two beautiful pins. tactic. Two pins. Yeah. And he resigns. Yeah, I mean, I think now the match is over. If, if someone gets a winning position, they'll just resign probably. Yeah, I think I think we will get maybe one more game. No, we'll get two more games. This and one more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, that... Uh... I haven't played one of these like cage matches 
with the, oh this is this line i, I didn't i t did i tell you about this recently yeah i, I and I actually i remember you, when i yeah. had this against a brazilian guy i think i told the story before but i played this brazilian guy um in the in the pan american under 20 in um in la paz bolivia and the guy's name since there are people who i'm sure know of him and will tell him i, ha I had this line of night g5 against this guy called kaiser mafra luis i think was his name um and basically it was like 2000 and i think it was 2000 and three or two i don't remember what year but i got this against him i got this winning position um out of the opening against him yeah no, his, name, his name is kaiser moffat Ka kaiser Ka wait yeah <laughs> wait free queen oh, oh. <laughs> his name is kaiser mafra m-a-f-r-a yeah not kaiser soze you guys stop being weird why did you take the queen i i i don't think she wanted to i i, I think she felt it was like she wanted six of the the, the, the plan but, but like now the she, on, now the, the bishop on C is kind of stuck. I think I think she realized it was a slip. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean, all, there's also that too. To be fair, but yeah. Uh oh, rook g8. Oh no, there's rook c8. Oh no. Oh no. Oh wait, rook g4. Knight f. Oh, but you lose because it's check. It's just it's just check. It, it's so yeah, close. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Brutal. Brutal. Right, one gonna more. be one last game, I think. Yeah. Yo, there, there's like few things in life more demoralizing than like getting mm -hmm. the next game going and then chess.com aborting it and going to halftime. <laughs> like, <laughs> true. I, uh, true. I mean, I know they have to do it, but like I would always be like, all right, it's game time. And then yeah, I actually got to the point I started timing it. Like I didn't want to show what opening I was going to play. Mm -hmm. So and then yesterday, because we played such a fast third game, right. mm -hmm. I had to play again and I played a move. And then they didn't go to break. And I was like, oh. So then we played a full game and Right, right, right. Yeah, no, no, I, I know that. I know that feeling, yeah. Yeah. It's very weird. <sighs> okay, but this will be our It's been a good will match a... though. I really enjoyed the I I really enjoyed the blitz portion. Yeah, I mean I think the difference really is just that that when they got it's it's actually not too different from your match in, in a way, although you didn't maximize you didn't maximize this advantage, but um where where basically Alexandra, she, she in the time scrambles when they're getting low, like the instincts or just the reactions are not as not as um, not as fast or as as precise as Krikors. That's really a difference. Yeah. And this was one thing that you didn't actually you you, you didn't move fast enough because you should have been able to maximize more on was um, that when Roberto got really low on time when you both took like three or four seconds, you won all those scrambles. Um, there's Bishop, Bishop C2. C2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but like that 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 is really important. Yep d5 d4 and it's these small things that make a difference it's just it's like okay well what's the big deal but you know in a long match these little things make a huge difference rook c8 c4 yeah c4 c3 knight e6 oh don't hang up rook oh D3. push pawn's uh -oh. going the pawn is uh -oh. just going okay that okay unnecessary rook d3? oh rook d3 is uh, rook d2, rook d2, rook d2, rook d2. Rook d2 keep it alive Takes okay. rookie three. Yeah. King is two. Luckily, there's no mate. Rookie three. Ah. Uh, there's F5? a mate, right? No stalemate. F four. <laughs> Takes. Takes. How is there no mate? Oh my god. Ah, uh, this is gonna She's be a spite win. Got to move. She's got to move. Krikor is more technique here. Just oh. sack the rook. Just sack the rook on F seven. You gotta sack yep. the rook on F seven. Sack. Yeah. Sack, just sack. Yeah, you got to sack somewhere there and and, and take away his pre moves. That's what you have yep. to do. That was uh, that was intense. Yeah, I think at the end, like that that's that's just an experience thing of, of playing more more bullet. Is when you played a lot of bullet, making these sacrifices at some moment when your opponent has this sequence yeah. of pre moves is just one of those experience things. That's all it is. I think. I well, think guys, we... yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Yeah. I think we need we just need Krikor on the mic, yeah. but I guess he's celebrating. Okay, okay, but... okay. I'm here, I'm here, I'm back. Krikor, congrats. <laughs> yeah, congrats. Uh... Thanks, that was fun. So he, he like uh Hikaru's kind of assessment was that early on, right? It mm. was uh it was weird. There was a few games that could have went maybe either way, and it, it it sort of it was kind of because like the, the match shaped out the way it did maybe because of some of the first blitz games i don't know if you guys felt the same way 
I'm not sure. Yeah. I think overall, I mean, the difference, the score difference, like 22 to 10, it's not like 16 to 15. And of course, I mean, I had some winning positions, but at the end, uh, I was just too slow. I mean, on the last seconds, and that's what mattered here in the match most of all, uh, because, well, I mean, I'm not very used uh, to playing with no increment at all. I feel more comfortable playing like uh, at least with one second. And since we played with no increment, of course, I mean, that's what decided the match. Uh, I mean, okay, we can say that there were some very equal games, but after all, I, mean, I think the result shows uh, that it was not really the question of one or two games. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, what I was yeah. saying, though, was to me, I kind of was looking at it as from, like, Blitz and Bullet, because it was pretty clear in the Bullet section, yeah, Krikor was obviously, um, I guess, like, he had more technique, he's used to playing with, with, with less time, but, like, in the Blitz, I felt the first two to three games could have gone either way, right? Like, you, you yeah. could have won, yeah. you, you could have maybe won those a couple of those uh, first ones, and that I think it kind of set the trend, perhaps. Uh, how, how did you feel, uh, Krikor? Yeah, I mean, I think in those matches, usually, the beginning sets the sets the tone eventually of course you can come back and, and change what's going on but usually when you start like you know you feel like you're finding some some tricks or if you're you are confident or not too confident then i think there's a difference and then you start opening up score and then it's kind of it's hard to change i think that that trend i don't know but yeah of course in the blitz you have many more Tough positions at the beginning. I don't remember exactly the positions, but uh, I think we had tough games. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so many games. Okay, we were thirty-three games already. Well, I, yeah. uh, I, I just wanted to thank you both, obviously, for for playing the match. But ma match aside, like you know, more big picture, just so everybody knows, all four chats that obviously we will be sending both of you invitations to join for like the next tournament. Um, when at when you know Hikaru is playing uh, in in this uh, meltwater, this next one has like yeah, some good space. luck. It starts tomorrow, right? Uh, uh, no, the day after, uh, right? Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Good um, luck. Yeah. Good be, luck. We'll there. be rooting for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll obviously ask you to join. I guess you know just on a on a on a more kind of big picture note, and Krikor, I guess I'll I'll, I'll go to you first. Um, talk a little bit about what it's like maybe being a, a grandmaster where you're from and you know like if there's no over the board chess to play um how much has the online boom like mm -hmm. been beneficial for your career i mean like what are your plans i mean how was the signing going and mm -hmm. just talk about that a little bit yeah i mean it's been a it's been a crazy year in a for chess i mean we had to go through so much everyone and then chess found its way in the middle of all this 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 mess this craziness that the, the world is is leaving now so because of many things and of course mainly because of the tv show i guess we had a, a huge boom and in brazil was the same brazil was the same and uh i'm, I'm so happy to be signed with a with a esports organization because i mean it shows that we're uh, entering a space that we didn't have before with chess so it's pretty exciting and i'm streaming more because of that i'm more motivated to be streaming of course i'm pretty excited to be back to tournaments again over the board but as we see here it's gonna take a while i think until you get back in track but uh so far i'm pretty excited with the streaming playing and of course trying to provide uh, entertainment for everyone not only being competitive anymore the thing everything has changed at least for me and for many players i think to not all not only be competitive player but also to understand that we are able to bring joy and entertainment to so many people, which I think was an idea that uh, we didn't have, at least I didn't have before. I thought my entertainment was to play good tournaments and that's it. Mm -hmm. And not like be streaming for hours, but people love it. And we have an amazing community here in, uh, in, in Brazil. And I mean, everywhere, of course, but the one I am more in contact here. Right. So we have you, so many streamers. Yeah. Do, do you have an inside joke like the cornfield? Like if we know about Krikor, do you have like one big inside joke for your channel? <laughs> Not ready, I think, to be translated any. <laughs> okay, okay. That would sound as nice as that one because he uses that so much. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. People told me there were some some Brazilian guys making a mess in your chat. So I'm I'm sorry for that. Oh no, 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 no. Listen, no, man. Yeah, okay. Listen, I, as I told my chat. <laughs> 
as you, I don't know, uh, well, I know that Hikaru knows, I don't know if you guys know about the, the recent ongo ongoing events, but uh, okay. I have a new, I have a new love for that kind of trolling, you know, because okay. what I've experienced the past week is uh, way worse than that. So, okay, great. Um, so then, then we're good. <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, it's, it's all good. I guess, Alexandra, the, the same question to you. Um, you've been on with us for, you know, many matches, so we've kind of asked similar questions, but um, what, you know, what do you think is going to, do you think that, chess will make that transition in russia from respected being classical you know like that's like where it is i mean the average elo of the top 100 players in russia is 25 20 it's like insane right so but will we see someone maybe is that how what is the esports scene like in russia is it a, is that a thing is it popular well, in chess i mean chess wise i'm not sure yet i mean we haven't had I mean, any um, contracts yet? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Russian streamers, I think, so, so far as I know, as far as I know. And uh, um, uh, I, I don't really see it growing so much and in uh, such pace as the English-speaking community or English-speaking uh, English streamers. Um, there are, of course, new names. Uh, in the Russian like streamer streaming world, chess world, but um, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, say that it's grown so much. Uh, I don't at least feel it this way. Yet. Right. I, I guess to add on that yes. point, uh, Alexandra, since probably like me, I mean, I, when I think about chess, they're pro we're probably the two. It's weird to say this, but to, to the two like oldest, I mean, uh, chess playing streamers, you know, on, on Twitch, and probably the, the, the players. <laughs> The players who have had the longest careers, I think, I think by a wide margin, have been in chess for, for I mean, I, I know like for you, it's probably been what, like 30 years. And for me, it's like, I don't know, like 25 years. So we, we, we've been in chess for so long. Like, do you really think there, what do you see the future of chess online as being? Do you think there's going to be a mix of like over the board and online? Do you think everything can kind of go back to the way it was? What, where, what do you think about the future of chess? Well, actually, I think that um, right now, what we have right now, it's like we've opened a new discipline, as they call it, uh, an online chess. It should not be compared, I think, to over-the-board chess. It's different, and we should understand it. I mean, it's okay to have different disciplines. We play Blitz, Rapid, uh, Classical Chess, and now online chess. And since uh, we managed so well, I think, in the last year, uh, I expect to see many more tournaments online but hopefully for those who are looking forward to playing over the board they will just uh, i mean this over the board tournaments will also come back so we'll just uh, we'll end up having more tournaments and that's great i think more chess players will have uh, more chances to play to succeed and also um um, because of this uh, streaming boom that's uh, currently taking place in the English community, it will somehow, I think, touch other languages as well and other communities. And it will give also more people, maybe like not grandmasters, not professional chess players, but anyway, uh, uh, who those who love chess, who enjoy chess, will uh, give more possibility for them to stay in this chess world, to stream, to entertain the public, to comment. And that's wonderful. I think we just we just opened a new door. And uh, we should not, I think, complain, saying that, OK, chess uh, is now such a, an online thing. No, just a new discipline, new way to play. And why not? By the way, just for the record, I think Hikaru, I think Krikor is older than you. Um, uh, yeah, I think he's Hikaru's 87, <laughs> 87, right? Oh, uh, you, you know, probably, probably, <laughs> probably the reason Krikor is just because I haven't seen you at many tournaments, whereas I feel like, I, I mean, I remember <laughs> yeah. seeing Alexandra, I mean, Krikor looks Goddard youthful. At tournaments. You know, <laughs> you know, like, youthful I, vibe. <laughs> I played, I played the first world championship that I played in uh, uh -huh. 98. I uh -huh. think Hikaru also played. In Oropesa del Mar, ninety-eight, right? Yeah, but I play. I actually played in ninety-seven. As, as ninety-seven was, was my first one in. Rico, you haven't no, played my... in nineteen ninety-five, <laughs> because it was no. In why Brazil. I'm asking it? Yeah, it was in Brazil. No, it was, I, that was the just only starting. time I went to Brazil, and uh, ah, you came to play here. Oh, yes, nice. yes. Uh, well, I, mm, I was actually my parents sent me alone, and that was mm -hmm. like the only um, tournament I think I went alone. 
because they were always accompanying me. But since mm -hmm. the tickets were so expensive, and at that time, when we flew from Moscow to Brazil, we needed to, to make three stops, I think, for, wow. to, refuel, <laughs> to refuel the plane. And we stopped yeah. somewhere in Africa, somewhere, I mean, I remember. And uh, they just sent me alone, I mean, not alone with the Russian national team, but they said, maybe it's just the only, you know, time in my life mm -hmm. I will uh, go to Brazil. So they sent me there. I mean, it was a very interesting experience uh, because I was on my own for the first time in my life. Uh, well, I did not really uh, win any medals, but that's uh, that's yeah. that's the only thing. That's the only time <laughs> I've been to Brazil so far. There are not many chances to come to Brazil for chess, I guess. It's mm -hmm. not really common. Wow. <laughs> but people love you here. You should come again. Maybe if there's another chance, I don't know. People yeah, enjoy your, your content. I'd love to come. Man, I couldn't convince my dad to get in the car and drive like 30 miles to a tournament, you know, but flying, uh, I mean, both, <laughs> b both my parents were scared of, of flying, so uh, I didn't fly a lot. That's crazy. Hikaru and I are the, are we the youngest on the call, maybe? I guess. Oh, you yeah. see? Uh, well, <laughs> you I guess. See? <laughs> Dinosaurs wow. much, yes. That's, yeah, that's how crazy. it should be called. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, was, that, was, that was fun, that the tournament. I think uh, Tamer won the, the World Championship, right? In 98. <laughs> He won. Wow. Uh, I, th I think it, I think he did. Yeah. Yeah. I have the cross table. It's fun. There's so many names that so many players that I already that stopped playing. Play. In 1997, my father said that it's yeah. useless to go to the youth tournaments and uh, no, because at that time we needed to pay for everything. I mean, since my for my parents to accompany me uh, because the mm. federation paid only for i mean my trip, and he said there is no point to. Uh, go to this tournament and actually I regret it. I think, I mean, they're fun, this uh, uh, kids' uh, youth tournaments and mm -hmm. um, they definitely, uh, one definitely gets uh, no, normally good memories from them. And You guys are talking about the World Youth Championships, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so um, just for anybody that, that doesn't know, um, your federation normally will, will will sponsor like the best player or, or maybe one or two of the best well, players. The Russian champion, yeah, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. for the age group. So mm -hmm. in the United States, the way it works now is if you pay, you can go. I don't, is it the same in Russia or Brazil? In the US, you can go. Well, Anybody you always can go. can go. Yeah, now no. Yeah, it you used can go. To be, at my <laughs> time, it used to be that only champions of countries were allowed to play. And then oh, yeah. they changed this rule to make it uh, profitable for organizers, most of all, to yeah. uh, let, uh, I mean, anyone who can pay, play. And well, I mean, there are pluses and minuses in every mm -hmm. system. And, uh, but at that time I already stopped playing, stopped participating in uh, kids tournaments and I switched to yeah. Um, yeah, here's more kinda, serious chess. Yeah, yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of the same here. I think maybe a long time ago, maybe they used to pay for champions, but now you just, you if you if you can pay for your ticket and everything and you go mm -hmm. that's it yeah you, yeah i mean i would help. say it was it was the same way here too like when, when i was playing uh i think the last one i played was in uh 2001 it still i think was only the cha only like the best player in the age group could go and maybe like the second best player could go um but then like a mm -hmm. year or two afterwards they just opened it up to everybody so yes it, it used to be um it, it used to be that way even for for americans too yeah well this was uh it was a lot of fun. I just well, it was good to hear from uh, from from both of you and just to see what's kind of going on uh, all all over the world. So thank you to both of you for the match, and we'll probably see you in the next week again. 